I'm Russ Johnston from Pioneer Electronics. Welcome to the 2004 Pioneer Pure Vision Las Vegas Bowl. We are proud to be the title sponsor of this event and the first ever matchup between the Wyoming Cowboys and UCLA Bruins. As a manufacturer of Pure Vision Plasma Televisions, Pioneer, along with ESPN, is excited to bring this game to you tonight in high definition, which in our opinion is the only way to watch sports on television. From everybody at Pioneer Electronics, happy holidays and enjoy the game. Franklin along with Mike Gottfried and welcome 48 hours before the big guy comes down and makes all the little ones happy I think we got an interesting ball game here tonight and speaking of the kind of weather that you expect at Christmas time Mike it can make a difference in this ball game tonight very very windy temperature supposed to drop down to around 30 degrees who does that favor UCLA because of the dominant running game they can control the line of scrimmage Mike, we talked to earlier tonight in a cut-in about the big guy against the little guy. And not just figuratively speaking, but literally, the offensive line of UCLA against the defensive front of uh, the Cowboys could be a difference. And talk about one matchup in particular. Yeah. The Bruins are bigger, faster, stronger. Ed Bland, the tackle, he's going to be blocking on Dusty Hoffsnyder, who's 5'10". That's stretching him because I towered over him when I talked to him, and I'm 5'11". Okay, let's go down to the sideline. Third member of our telecast team, as usual, Aaron Andrews. What do you have for us? Ron, a couple of lineup changes for you on UCLA side of things. News not good for wide receiver Tab Perry. The fifth-year senior suffered a high ankle sprain at Tuesday's practice. He is out tonight. Freshman Brandon Brazil steps in for him. At the linebacker position, Ben Laurier was supposed to play in place of the injured junior Spencer Havener. He got sent home on Monday for violating team rules. So fifth-year senior Tim Warfield gets his first collegiate start. Ron? Okay, Aaron, stay warm. We look forward to hearing from you tonight. There's Joe Glenn, second season as the Wyoming head coach. He won a national title in Division II, also another national title in 1AA, and really has the Cowboys going in the right direction. And across the field from him, uh, I think one of the really good young coaches in college football, second season at UCLA, Carl Durrell, record of only 12-12, and 12, but this ball club has shown great improvement as the season has gone on. Let's take a look at the bowl history for Wyoming. Four and six all-time. First appearance in 11 seasons. And for UCLA, 12-12 and one overall. They are 10 and five in their last 15 bowl appearances. Rock, a big question. Will UCLA play? I think they will. Here comes the kick. And it is Marquis and Maurice Drew. Drew will return it right up the middle. 20, 25, breaks it out big. Gets to the sideline and a foot race at the 40, all the way out to midfield. And a great start for the UCLA Bruins as Ron Rocket stopped after a 49-yard return by the Bruins. What a way to get started. So the starting quarterback for the UCLA Bruins is... Drew Olson and Mike talk about him what is the book on good Drew Olson? quarterback Ron 19 touchdowns 13 interception four of those were by deflected footballs he's got a great running game to help him actually got thrown into the job then lost it now has come back and taken over the number one uh, position they go straight ahead with the run and this is not a surprise because UCLA wants to see if they can't do this all night tonight's starting lineup brought to you by Zales Manny White and Michael Petrie in the backfield Mercedes Lewis at tight end he is a great looking athlete Taylor and Bragg the two wide receivers up front with the offensive line and they're gigantic Mosler Tavaga, McCloskey, Vieira, and the USS Blatton. That's what Wyoming's calling Ed Blatton at 6'9", 345 pounds. 
second down and eight. Off the right side is Maurice Drew. Maurice with an ankle injury late in the year, but has had three weeks to get over it. Here are the defenders that have to stop this UCLA offense. Robbins, Hofschneider, Morris, and Flora. With the linebackers, Tool, Charter, and Austin Hall, and in the secondary. It will be Martin and Butler at the corners. Winley, the leading tackler on the team at free safety, and Ron Rocket is over at strong safety. Wow, what a hit at the line of scrimmage. Mike, they're not going to come close to having the first down. And jumping up into the middle is Sharner, the middle linebacker. Randy, a senior out of Calistoga, California. Also, Aaron Robbins was there to help out on the stop. And, Ron, you know Wyoming. They're like a kid at Christmas. They're excited about being in a bowl game. They're going to play here, and UCLA has to match their intensity. Chris Cluey stands in to punt. Number 39, a senior. He's out of Seal Beach, California. Here's his boot. It is into a very strong win, and the ball has just died. And now takes a big UCLA bounce. It's going to roll dead at the 11-yard line. So the Cowboys of Wyoming will take over with not-so-good field position following that 36-yard punt. So the starter and quarterback, Corey Bramlett, and if the name is familiar, of course, his brother, a three-year starter here at Wyoming. Tell us about Mr. Bramlett, about Good Corey. Good athlete. He can run the football, quarterback draws, quarterback zones. He can throw the football. I expect him to come out here and try to run the football with his offensive team early. Ivan Harrison, number two, the lone setback. Not a real big fellow, 5'7", 190, a sophomore. UCLA showing blitz, and they come with it. Play action, far sideline, got his man wide open, and that's Bonite. And Bonite takes it out across the 30 to around the 34-yard line. And you need to understand one thing about number nine. 23 yards on the reception. He's not a burner, Mike, but he normally draws double coverage. He's the best weapon on this offensive football team. Got great hands and great size. 6'192. Well, you could see Trey Brown, the corner on the right there, is the man who got turned completely around. Ben Emanuel finally come came over to make the stop for UCLA, but Wyoming now with better field position out across the 33. Short drop, quick out to the sideline here, and it's Bo Knight again, and he'll take it to the 41-yard line. And right now, this is more like a running game with the short pitch and catch. Tonight's starting lineups brought to you by Zales, and the offense for the Wyoming Cowboys, Harrison and Watkowski, he is the tight end. Barge, Holden, and Bo Knight, the wide receivers. Up front with the offensive line, Johnson, Irving, uh, Trenton France, an academic All-American, also All-Conference at center. Karcher and Richards on the right side, a guard and tackle. It is second down. They need uh, about three and a half yards for the first. Pitch back goes to Harrison. Tries to turn the corner. That is a nice defensive job by Justin London, the middle linebacker, the junior out of Roanoke, Virginia. Here's how they start defensively. Morgan and Kevin Brown. Nasulu and Harwell rounding out the right side of the defensive front. Walker, London, and Warfield getting a rare start tonight. They only have four linebackers available to play. And in the secondary, Clark and Brown at the corners, Page and Emmanuel at the safeties. Third down, they need to take it to the 43-yard line to keep this drive going. Lamar in motion. Quick throw right over the middle, in and out of the hands of the intended receiver, and he had it maybe just a little bit behind him as McNeil was there applying the pressure, and Borges is a man who couldn't hold on. Josh, a junior out of Blue Springs, Missouri. You see a little bit behind him, but that's got to be caught. Yes, Bramlett is off to a good start. Bo Knight with two catches. They're throwing the ball well. They have to find a way to run. <laughs> Bragg is the deep man, and they almost got that one. Very high kick and long because of going with the win. No fair catch. Wow, that was dangerous. Good coverage by the Cowboys downfield, but the tackle is going to be made at around the 21-yard line. And as we head the break on this 40-yard putt, take a look at how close they came on a daring catch by UCLA. They will scrimmage from just across their own 20. We'll be right back. 
So we are back and some of the uh, chilly crowd tonight here at Sam Boyd Stadium in Las Vegas. Mike, it looks as though we've seen what the two teams would like to do. UCLA to run. Not surprising. Short pitch and catch by Wyoming. Here's a short drop and a pass right over the middle. And they've got that complete to Lewis. And the big tight end is loose. 40, 45, and out to around the 49-yard line. Mercedes Lewis, 6'6", 255, with a 28-yard catch and run. And Mike, absolutely one of the best-looking athletes that you can see at this tight end position. He may be the best tight end in the country. Mercedes Lewis, he's 6'6", big target, but he can run after catching the football. And he's very good blocker. He is a great looking kid. They list him at 6'6 and maybe a little bit taller. Marquis comes in at tailback and they'll give it to him to the right side ahead of steam. 5'6", 7". He is powering his way close to a 10-yard run. Hoff Schneider is the man who's battling him trying to stop his forward progress but you could see the pile just continuing to move. How about the game plan in this one tonight? Well, they got to poke up. He pokes with the running game. Punch him out. Run the football. Ride the two tight ends, Mercedes Lewis and the wide receiver Craig Bay, Bragg on defense, contain, contain Bull Knight and play with intensity. Ron, the big question is, is UCLA going to play? They got to match the intensity of Wyoming. Carl Durrell looking on. Marquis is the man who is about eight yards behind the offensive center. Second down and short, maybe a down to play with. In fact, they move him up in a slot on the left side and they're going to throw. Sets deep near side got him open. Did he catch it in bounds? Nope. The official says no. Beyond the sideline, and that one thrown just a little bit late to Cowan because boy, he had beaten the defender. Drew Olson, you're right. A little late getting him the football. He also had his back. Maurice drew out of the backfield open for the first down. Yeah, great, good call by the officials who were right there. You could see neither foot close to being down. And now it's third down and short. They go two tight ends. And we've got a flag, and it appears his old movement. Mercedes Lewis is uh, the man who came out of his stance. Rocky Good out of the SEC, the referee tonight. Obviously an SEC crew. In fact, we started the year with these guys up in Washington, D.C. in that opener with SC and Virginia Tech. So a mistake by the Bruins. And now instead of a second down and short, they, they miss on the pass. And it's third down at about six and a half yards for the first. Mercedes Lewis, third and five. He's the kind of guy you look for. Well, let's see if that's what they do. Olsen deep drop this time. Here comes pressure. Gets it away and it's caught right off the shoe tops and running toward the middle of the field with the first down and they say that he was down or incomplete pass is the call. Drew took it and started upfield. The officials got a lot of help from the bench in Wyoming's players and coaches. Okay, let's take another look at Drew it right Olsen here. Olsen under fire. Yeah, that's that's a good call. Yeah, that uh, that one skipped up, and he, like a good shortstop, got it on the short hop and was about to take off for the end zone. Second punt of the night. His first one was 36 yards. Marsh is the deep man, and this is a dandy kick into the wind. It's going to hit at the three-yard line and go right out of bounds. Good heavens, what a kick. Now they say it around the five, so Cluey with an outstanding effort. 42 yards in the boot, but he nails Wyoming deep. Jill Hotel here in Las Vegas. Went over there and had dinner last night, Michael, at Picasso's. They very, give, very nice restaurant. They give money away there. <laughs> I didn't find any of that. <laughs> Should have known it. Right up the middle with the Ron Harrison. Breaks it out big. Out across the 10. And out to the 14-yard line. Wesley Walker is there to make the tackle. Game plan, Cowboys. How Two about it? Two tight ends. Run the ball. Everybody's run against UCLA this year. And then when you get in red zone, got to take advantage of it. Stop the run on defense. Set the tone on the road. They're one and four on the road. So they got to make some good things happen. Second down and very short. You can see the yellow line. They need to take it to the 15-yard line to uh, pick up the first and keep this drive going. 
Nine yard run on uh, first down. Play action, gonna go on top. He's got a man wide open. Caught at the 50 yard line by Bonite. And Bonite still in bounds at the 30 and finally double teamed at the 31 yard line. How about that? Trey Brown is who they're picking on, and the freshman has not been up to it so far. Well, a great story about Bo Knight is he was being recruited by the defensive coordinator of UCLA, Larry Kerr, when he was at Colorado State. And he told Bo Knight, he said, you're going to be a receiver. He was a quarterback in high school. He went to Wyoming because they said he would be a quarterback. Now he's a wide receiver and a great <laughs> one. Well... And that play right there is for 55 yards. So Bonite off to a terrific start on this night. The ball just inside the 31-yard line of UCLA. So the Cowboys trying to show some offensive firepower of their own. Harrison right in the middle. Brigham Harwell comes up to make the tackle. And Mike, how important is this? Wyoming's two possessions. They started at their own 11, and now their own five. But they have not been slowed down by the poor field position. No, and they, they've been able to dig out Ron you're right but here's where they've had problems in the past it's New Mexico they couldn't punch the ball in for TDs they had to settle for field goals Joe Glenn knows he's got to score touchdowns against UCLA yeah that's that's true with the offensive firepower of the Bruins uh, field goals are not going to do it midway point of this opening quarter from Las Vegas They'll go with the running play to the left side. Harrison hit behind the line of scrimmagers. Harwell again. And Harwell, the big freshman out of Chino Hill, 6'1", 259, knocks him down for no gain on the play. Here's the pivot where we're looking at the offensive and defensive linemen. Now, Wyoming has not been able to run the ball this year. UCLA has not been able to stop the run. So uh, something's got to give. Tackle to tackle. Uh, as far as the defense and the offense, UCLA's defensive and offensive linemen just a lot bigger than the fellows from Wyoming. Here's where Bramlett is a running quarterback. He can help you. He's three of four for 85 yards so far, and it's been all bow night that he's thrown to. And they want to call a timeout and to talk it over with a third down and long. So let's take a break. No score, 647 left opening quarter. Cowboys are driving. So we are back in Las Vegas. Huge play right here after what has been a very solid drive in a short amount of time. It is third down, and they need to take the ball all the way down just outside the 20-yard line. Bramlett with an audible. He's got Harrison to his left. Bonite, the wide receiver, to the top of your screen. At a very long count. Good protection. Gets it out to this side. Caught after the ball was almost intercepted. And I'm telling you, if it is picked off by McNeil, he's laughing all the way to the end zone. Can you believe that? Uh, Eric McNeil missed a great opportunity to start this game off with a six to nothing uh, score. There was nobody in front of him. And Barge has to also be the second most surprised game in the ballpark because I'm sure he never thought that the football would get to him. So it's fourth down, and uh, it would appear, well, let's see. They're going to go for the distance field goal. The ball is going to be placed down at the 29-yard line. It's a 39-yard attempt. Yossi with the effort. Good pass. Plenty of distance and plenty of accuracy. He's good. So the Wyoming Cowboys, heavy underdogs in this ball game, have gone on the school board first. And a very excitable Joe Glenn welcoming his players to the sideline and saying, hey, fellas, good job. We passed the first lick in this ball game. Let's continue to pass them. Mike, the weather in this ball game tonight, it has not affected the throwing the way I thought it would. You can see a balloon in the distance there disappearing. They're saying the wind right now, northeast at 13. It is supposed to blow between 18 to 22 later tonight, and the temperature dropping down into the low 30s. Aaron Andrews, let's go down to you on the sideline. Well, Ron, speaking about the weather, I had a chance to speak with UCLA coaches about the conditions out here, and they said we have not been in this cold weather all season long. We faced a little bit of it versus Oregon, but it wasn't as bad as this. In speaking with Wyatt, Wyoming side of things they said hey it gets this cold where we live in September so they're not affected at all by the way UCLA does have heaters Ron I know you'd like
like one of those. Uh, I would. You know, Aaron, another thing that UCLA is confronted with today, and I rode down with several young men on the elevator this afternoon, and it sounds like a small deal, but Mike could address this very accurately. They said, we don't like the late start. The latest start we had all year was a mid-afternoon game, and this waiting all day long, those kids were going stir-crazy around the hotel. Well, they wanted to get down that hotel. They wanted to get somewhere to, uh, to get started on this football game. Yalsi to kick it off. Marquis and Maurice Drew, the two deep men. And now the wind has blown the ball off the tee, and they may wind up having to have a holder up there. Might be the best thing that happened to UCLA, that Wyoming goes down and scores. A little wake up. The, they're from the Mountain West Conference. You're from the Pac-10. You look down a little bit. Shouldn't. But uh, now they got their attention. This is a spinner. It's not going to be quite as far. Taken at the eight-yard line by Marquis. And Marquis caught for the waist. Still fighting his way. He'll come out to around the 24-yard line. Well, Friday night on ESPN at 7 Eastern, it's the Sheridan Hawaii Bowl. Timmy Chang is the NCAA's all-time leading passer. And the Hawaii Warriors take on Daryl Hackney and UAB. The Blazers will make the school's first-ever bowl appearance, the Sheridan Hawaii Bowl, tomorrow night on ESPN at 7. UAB, very good. Hackney, very good player. Quick pass out of the backfield, Marquis turns it upfield and the ball is loose at the 29 yard line and Wyoming has recovered recovered by Zach Morris the senior out of Denver one of the captains on this football team could have been intercepted from the start by floor number 43 had a chance at it in UCLA everybody questioned will they be ready to play they're not showing focus here early you know what actually he ran into the defender or his own player judge for yourself that's when the ball came out his own player knocked him into the defender that's when the handle came off so Wyoming with a really good opportunity and now another timeout has been taken and called by the Cowboys. Didn't have enough men on the field. Now here's again, Ron. We've seen golf, ball games all year. Alabama against Auburn. Alabama got off to a good start, but had, had to keep kicking field goals. Here's where Joe Glenn knows his team's had trouble when they get the ball inside the 30-yard line. They got to get touchdowns. Well, we talked about the first two possessions of the night at the 11 and the 5. Horrible field position. Here they get the turnover, and let's see what they can do with very decent field position at the 29. We might mention about this guy right here. Not only did he win a Division II title and a Division I AA, Joe also has been named Coach of the Year in his division three different times, which there are not many people that have that kind of resume. He's the kind of guy that will get your team excited. He gets the fans excited. First win over an SEC team, Ole Miss this year. First bowl appearance since the 83 or 93 Copper Bowl. By the way, Wyoming has now forced 27 turnovers this year. Yesterday at the banquet, we all saw how very popular Joe Glenn is. In fact, somebody mentioned, you know, if Joe ever decided to run for governor, the governor better look out because he is really popular. UCLA showing blitz. They come off the corner. They go up top for the end zone. And flags come down as the ball was not caught. But Bo Knight, I believe they're going to say, was interfered with by Matt Clark. Omar Jacobs the other night on ESPN on the uh, GMAC Bowl let himself be into the Heisman Trophy. Bo Knight tonight on ESPN is showing you why he's going to be on the Blitnikoff head of the list next year. Let me tell you something. You know, Bo Knight even told us on the phone when we talked with him, Mike, he said, I am not a burner. He said, my, my best in the 40 is a 4 5 7. He's running by people. I think even he is being a little modest, don't you? Well, he is, but uh, I'll tell you what, Trey Browns really has his hands full. That time, though, they picked on the other side. They went Matt, after Matt, Matt Clark, Clark, the senior. Showing no favorites. Joseph Harris comes in at tailback, number 32. 
And here comes the option. And he will hold on to the football. Corey Bramlett will. Ben Emanuel dared to make the tackle. Sometimes when your teams had problems in the red zone, it's a it's a conscious thing where you start to think about it. How can we get the ball in the end zone? The players start questioning themselves and the, the play calling and everything involved. So you just try to settle down, stay calm, get a big play. What what UCLA has done right here is for the first time tonight. Gave, given them long yardage on second down because Wyoming on every first down prior to this has had a big first down play straight ahead with the runner it's Harris being pushed back by that huge UCLA's defense in front Morgan and UCLA comes away with the football and now we're still we got people pushing and shoving and the officials try to separate them London is the man who came up with the football and now here comes a flag in there's no call by the official I think he's going to say he's down they're going to have to sort this out because there's an official standing at the 10-yard uh, line. Maybe marking the ball there. Dead ball. Dead ball, personal foul on the defense. Dead ball, personal foul. On the offense, the third down. Don't like that call. Never have. It's a wash. There's the, the penalty should have been on right away on Justin London for throwing the football. You know, the clock running again because the offsetting penalties occurring on a play that was continuous, so they go from the ready. Harrison checks back in a tailback, and it's third down at about six. Straight to the quarterback. Got the pass complete, and it's a touchdown to Tyler Holden. That'll take care of those red zone kills. Well, Trey Brown, I know he's only a freshman, and he's no longer a freshman because it's been a long year, but it's been a long night so far this evening. They are really picking on him. Corey Bramlett with the throw and a good job by Holden getting the football over the line. Yalsi to attempt the extra point and trying to put the Cowboys up by 10 to nothing at the 4-11 mark. And he does as he knocks it right down the middle. So it's a 10-yard touchdown pass. Wyoming taking advantage of that fumble recovery at the 29. 4-11 left in this opening quarter. 10 to nothing, Cowboys. The Wyoming Cowboys, a huge underdog in this ball game, and they have jumped out with an early field goal. Then they get a fumble recovery at the 29 of the Bruins, and they take it in. And that right there really was a statement as far as I'm concerned. They said to UCLA, hey, we may have had trouble in the red zone before tonight, but uh, we're not going to have trouble in this ball game." Well, I said at the start, they're like a kid, little kid at Christmas. They are excited about opening this present. Personal foul called against Wyoming on the extra point. That's the reason the kickoff came from as deep as it did. And look at this. The ball is kicked by Yossi all the way past the deep man and into the end zone. So they will scrimmage at the 20-yard line rather than getting great field position. Well, after a season of turmoil, Brady Quinn and the Notre Dame Fighting Irish look for redemption as they take on Derek Anderson and the Oregon State Beavers in the Insight uh, Bowl on ESPN Tuesday night at 9.45 Eastern Time. And our crew will be there to bring you that ball game. Looking forward to seeing Derek Anderson, the Oregon State quarterback, one of the better ones in the country. He has really turned that season around for them. 
running play will go for short yardage, two, maybe three yards. Maurice drew the ball carrier, and Ron Rocket coming up from that strong safety position to make the hit. And uh, as the coaches talk about him, they say that Ron Rocket is one of those youngsters who has really stepped up and is quite a hitter. And as you can see, a player shake it up. It's Luke Chase, a redshirt freshman out of Windsor, Colorado. And the trainers are having to come from the far sideline to check him over. To this point, Wyoming's defense playing to run fairly well. In UCLA, their whole deal is conservative game plan. Carl Durrell, run, 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 then hit you with the long play action pass to Bragg and Mercedes Lewis. But so far, rushing yardage only 15 yards by the Bruins. Carl Durrell, now I'll tell you, he's, I talked to him last night at the hotel. He said, I'm not, you know, our, we know Wyoming's going to come out here and really be ready to play. I've challenged my guys, but so far, the Bruins are sleepwalking. Well, Wyoming, in this fight so far, the ones that have thrown a couple of punches that have kind of staggered the Bruins, and the Bruins have got to come back and get something going here. Olsen, short drop to throw. Near sideline, a little too high for Joe Cowan, and it'll be incomplete, and now a third down and long situation, UCLA. I talked about uh, Carl Durrell, and he said Oregon game, they went on the road, they beat Oregon, they played USC, they had a chance to win that football game, and all their coaches were hoping that they could get a big win tonight and springboard into recruiting and spring practice and wait for next year third and seven at the 23 yard line you see Wyoming coming on the blitz they have to hurry with the pass and it's overthrown interference flag comes down and junior Taylor the intended receiver was either held or interfered with and it looks as though that the Bruins are going to get the first down and this time by penalty Derek Martin's a corner number one Working on defense Junior Taylor. Against the defense. Number one. It's a spot foul. Automatic first down. Derek Martin, they're calling it on him. The post route, short post route by Junior Taylor did uh, impede his progress. Mike, that's only the second first down that uh, they had picked up. Lewis on that uh, reception early on in the quarter picked up the other one. Manny White and Maurice Drew split backs this time and they'll keep it on the ground again and this is Drew tries to get to the outside loses the football and he fumbles it out of bounds and they'll lose those couple of yards as Butler is the man who came up and made the tackle and also knocked away the football. He talked about the running game of UCLA they got to make it go he's got the ball in the wrong hand here. You got to have the ball when you take it from the quarterback, put it in the outside arm. He had it on the inside arm, and uh, Wyoming knew that, pulled it away. Well, those are the little mental errors yeah. that wind up getting you back. Lack of concentration. Second down and seven, and flag is down. They're going to have to uh, wait for the call by the officials, but they may be taking a walk back on this one. Dead ball. Ball start. Number 71 offense. He'll be five yards from the Bruins ball. All right, Second so down. this proves your point. Not picking on the Bruins, but this proves your point about lack of focus in this ball game. A, running back, ball in the wrong hand. They could have turned it over. They were lucky it went out of bounds. Now they get a five-yard penalty for movement ahead of the snap. They're looking at a second down at about 12 and a half to 13 yards. Sloppy. Yep. Uh, Bow Knight having a career night here against them as a receiver. Nothing going right for UCLA. Three penalties against the Bruins so far. And they go with a draw play. Right up the middle, and they'll bring it back maybe to the original line of scrimmage. That's Drew down at the bottom of that stack. Here's the other thing, Ron. U, uh, UCLA, they like the Rose Bowl and the, and the big bowls, and Wyoming is happy to come right here. Their crowd on every play is cheering for their team, and they, they this is important for them. They want to prove they can beat a Pac-10 team. 
And that's the trap you get into if you're UCLA and Carl Durrell. Well, as we mentioned and talked about the credentials of Joe Glenn, if you don't think this guy can coach, don't give him an opportunity. There's a screen pass near sideline. Manny White breaks by one tackle almost to the 40-yard line, but he's going to be short of the first down by five yards, and it will be punting time again. Cluey has been actually the biggest weapon for UCLA in this ballgame, but he's still having to kick into this monster win, which is not going to help the situation here. That's Marsh, who was back deep for the Cowboys, standing back at the 20-yard line. And here's the boot. Very high, good coverage kick, and it just dies in the wind. Be careful there. That could touch somebody. It is bounding back at the 14-yard line, now the 13. And Wyoming, as a flag goes down, very fortunate that they did not touch that football. Ron, they ran over the punt returner. Again, the lack of focus. You see it all the time. Sloppy, the penalties. They're not concentrating. UCLA Norris, number 22, ran right over the punt returner. Well, in his defense. Kick catch, interference, gets the kick and team, number 22. The penalty's 15 yards from the spot of the foul, first down. You see, Mike, what happened on this play? The ball was so high. Did you see the, boy, the forcing him out of bounds? And he lost where the football was because the wind kept blowing it back. It was so high. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, he looks up and just runs over the man, and the ball's not there yet. You can't make that arrow. Uh, you, you've got to be break down on the punt returner, Marsh. So now, Wyoming gets the football with good field position again, following his 15-yard step-off against the Bruins. 138 remaining, opening quarter, and it has been all Cowboys so far. Harrison, the lone setback, but they throw it right over the middle. Wodkowski, the tight end, makes the catch, and he is almost with a first down at the 49-yard line of UCLA. Tim Warfield making the tackle for the Bruins. Corey Bramlett is having a good first quarter, but, Ron, I'm going to tell you something. You and I could get open right now because every receiver's open. Bo Knight's having a big night. Uh, the tight ends with Kowski, they're wide open. Look at those numbers, six of seven, 111 yards, and one touchdown. By the start, I should say you, you could get open. I could get open. <laughs> you know better than that. Short drop, quick out pass, and they got that one complete to Pleasant. And Pleasant finally stopped at the 35-yard line. Dustin, a redshirt sophomore out of Temple, Texas. A little pick against man coverage. What I mean by that, a little basketball play where a receiver comes inside and does some pleasant, goes outside. You see nobody on him. Boy, Wyoming uh, could put a stake in the heart of UCLA here early. Page is the man who finally pushed him out of bounds. The one thing that Wyoming's got to take advantage of, they're going to lose the wind in about 50 seconds. But they keep this one on the ground. It is made inbounds, and the clock will continue to run by Trey Brown as Harrison on the carry. Trey Brown is the uh, son of Theotis Brown, the yeah. uh, former chief and Seattle player. And I talked to him in the hotel last night. I asked him, I said, what do you watch on every play? He said, I watch my son. He said, <laughs> he said I don't see anything else. <laughs> What was his dad's nickname? Bigfoot, wasn't it? Yeah. Good player. Second down and short for si uh, Wyoming. Little play action, and he's going to carry it. 25 and steps out of bounds at around the 20-yard line. That'll be well enough for the first down. But the most important thing, it stops the clock with nine seconds left. This and way, this is, you're right. This is where you might want to go to bull night. One pass play here with the win. You don't take for granted that these passers are going to be as easy in the second quarter because this wind is enough that it'll change up what you have to do to get the football to your receivers. Bill Cockhill, the offensive coordinator, knows he's had success against the Bruin defense. 
Keep our eye on Bull Knight, number nine. See the play clock is at five. Bramlett, and they're going to run a reverse. Get a block on the outside. The flag is down. And it is going to be a block in the back as the clock runs out. And it was Marsh. There's two penalties. One in the uh, middle of the offensive line. I think one on Jovan Bonite for blocking in the back. So much for the pass play. Yeah, two fouls on the play. Block in the back against number nine on the offense. We also have a face mask against number 78 on the offense. The face mask is a 15-yard penalty. That's what was accepted. So let's take a timeout. Ten to nothing. Wyoming, the shocking UCLA at the end of one quarter. ESPN. Can't end the quarter on a penalty. So following the step off, running for his life, and the ball is thrown incomplete to Harrison. And I'll tell you, Bramlett took a very, very hard shot after he uh, delivered the ball by Kevin Brown. Very fortunate that Justin London didn't cause a fumble there on Bramlett. Now UCLA's got to be able to use the win that Wyoming had such a good first quarter with. So, Mike, now that is the end of the opening quarter. Let's take a timeout. Yes, Downs. And they're up 10 to nothing. And they've got a situation of second down and very long following a, a personal foul penalty. And they set a screen to the short side of the field. It's Harrison as a flag is down. And that is a nice defensive play. If that uh, tackle is not made where it was by Clark, of course, the flag uh, might have brought it back anyway, but he had a lot of running room and an injury. Uh, has occurred to Ivan Harrison as he goes limping off the field and the trainers are right there to uh, take him to the bench. Holden, offense, number 78. The penalty 10 yards from the previous spot remains second down. This is a quarter now. UCLA has been going against the wind. So now they get a chance, Ron, to, to make something happen here against the offense of Wyoming and then when uh, their uh, offense Also, the Mike, field. now Wyoming with a couple of mental errors. Uh, a personal foul a moment ago, and now this penalty right here, it has uh, given him a uh, second down and a mile, 35 yards. Here comes pressure, gonna run it, Bramlett. Hit with a good open field tackle at the 40. He'll fall forward to the 39. Joe Glenn is all the way out on the field, and there's something he saw that he wanted his quarterback to do differently, but Dennis Keyes was right there to make the tackle on him. And Joe knows just what you were talking about. You got to take advantage while this little walkabout is occurring with UCLA because it may not last that much longer. Now, as you said, they've got the win. Here comes third down. Third down and 30. They need to take it all the way to the nine yard line. UCLA showed blitz, then they come way off that. And there comes a blitz off the top of your screen. Good protection. The ball is underthrown, and it's a good thing he did because Pleasant, the intended receiver, but the closest receiver to it was a defender for the UCLA Bruins. First good series that you thought UCLA really came out and dominated. They had help with penalties, but they stopped Wyoming and forced the punt. Great Bragg Bragg is the deep man. Adam Brooks is in the punt. Bragg, the young man that uh, had the 96-yard return against SC. 
This punt right here is just dying and almost caught before he got into the end zone, but it'll be a touchback, and the Bruins will take it over at their own 20-yard line. UCLA basic offense is a running game. They have not been able to get it going. Flag down here on the sideline right in front of us. And UCLA says no. Uh, we declined it. We'll take it at the 20-yard line. Formation against the offense. Only six men on the line of scrimmage. The penalty is declined. It's first down on the 20-yard line. One thing about bowls too, Ron, you get neutral officials, so you get your first chance, really, uh, to have SEC officials. UCLA, if you UCLA, Wyoming may have had them in the Ole Miss game. Different way of calling the game. Got to get used to them. So let's see as McCloskey comes out of the football that the Bruins can get something going offensively with the win. This pass over the middle, in and out of the hands of the intended receiver, Lewis, and a flag comes down at the 34-yard line. My first inclination, inclination is this is good call. John Wendling was really on top of Mercedes Lewis. Interference, pass interference against the defense, number 45. It's a spot foul, automatic first down. You talked about Mercedes Lewis being a good-looking tight end. I mean, he is the all-bus team. Um, when he gets on, when you arrive at a, a ballpark, you want him to be the first guy off the bus. You know, I told you at the meeting today, Mike, after standing next to him at practice day before yesterday, it was like they called central casting and said, send me the best-looking 6'6", 255-pound player you've got. This running play not very much doing as the Wyoming defense steps up and makes the stop. Tonight's game track brought to you by Pioneer. And so far, Bo Knight has had a great night. Three catches, 85 yards, and has been virtually unstoppable by the UCLA Bruins. Fumble recovery at the 29, and the Cowboys took advantage of it and took it into the end zone. Second down. Rushing tonight for UCLA, 21 yards on eight attempts. Pass near sideline. Got that one complete to Bragg, and Bragg up the sideline, pushed out of bounds across midfield at the 49-yard line. Terrence Butler on the stop, and it's a gain of 16 yards on the play. Bragg is impressive. A big play wide receiver. 12 touchdowns of 40 or more yards in his career. Mike, let me tell you something. In watching that USC game, and I watched the tape a couple of times, he had a 96-yard kick return that he just blew by everybody. This fella really has some great speed. The uh, career receiver uh, leader for UCLA as this ball is just thrown away. And the quarterback, Olsen, was thrown away out of bounds just as he got the pass off by John Winling. Drew Olsen might have should have run that football there because his wide receivers and tight end were covered. Hey, Mike, would have, should have, could have. But let me show you a play. We talked okay. about... We'll do it after this uh, this play right here. But a play that could have turned around that opening quarter. We talked about UCLA just having a difficult time getting started. White and Drew, the two setbacks, and it'll go with Drew. And he gets pounded at the line of scrimmage. Wow, does he get hit. Now let's show you this play that occurred back in the first quarter. Cowboys driving, but watch what happens on this pass right here. Watch McNeil, number two. Folks, this is six points right here, and he dropped the football that wound up as a reception for the Cowboys. That could have made the great difference in that first 15 minutes, no question. It's been a slow start, to say the least, for the Bruins. Bruins need to make something good happen for themselves, not something bad to themselves. Third down and 10. They need to take it to the 39 and a half yard line. Good protection. Now it breaks down, and that ball just well overthrown. Olsen wasn't even close on that one. And he may have been just throwing it away because the receiver was covered. 
Rams. A lot of talking on the field. Wyoming's defense is really challenging UCLA's offense. I mean, they really are barking at them because they have controlled the line of scrimmage and they have controlled the offense. Cluey to kick, and this time the youngster gets the win behind him. As you look at Marsh, the deep man, and here's the boot. Very high at good heavens. This is way, way, way deep. It's going to hit it to five, and it took such a high bounce. will go all the way into the end zone. He really has got a great leg, and when you put a huge win behind him, he can kick it and flip the field. Ten to nothing, Wyoming. We'll be right back. And very famous. Welcome to famous Las Vegas. So you run outside the uh, Mandalay Bay Hotel, right on the strip. The city that never sleeps probably sells fewer clocks to downtown than any city in the world. Pass over the middle, play action, and almost caught and then almost intercepted. Wodkowski couldn't hold on to it, and Raderink has come into the ball game. Number 11, the number two quarterback. He's a senior out of Longmont, Colorado, and they do this every game. They say he's going to play. Tried to get Wodkowski down the seam against two deep coverage where two safeties are on the hand and try to slip the tight end right inside in the middle. Had to pass. Radarink, a senior, 6'1", 205 pounds. Handoff goes to Bo Knight. They bring him off the edge, and the wide receiver shows, hey, I can be a ball carrier as well, and he'll have the first down because they're going to spot him out. Let's see, they're placing that down at around the 33, so it's a gain of 13 yards. Great thing about this football game, the country's finding out about Bo Knight, number nine, wide receiver, former quarterback in high school. Yep. By the way, give credit to 73, Chase Johnson. A sophomore out of Loveland, Colorado, the left tackle. He was the young man pulling on the play and did an outstanding job to pave the way for Bo Knight. Here comes another run. Uh, Joseph Harris, a junior out of Olathe, Kansas, is the ball carrier. Ron Franklin, along with Mike Gottfried and Aaron Andrews, coming to you from Las Vegas, Nevada. It is the Pioneer Pure Vision Las Vegas Bowl. You see the time on the clock, 10 minutes, 38 seconds. Yesterday at the luncheon, Mike, a huge turnout, and this city gets very excited about this bowl game. And I'll tell you, they go totally out of their way to make sure the two teams are entertained and really have a good time. Short drop, that pass too tall and almost intercepted. And I mean, he wound up trapping it, but they are very fortunate. Bramlett is that Emmanuel didn't come up with a pickoff right there. Had a chance for the interception. Cox, the tight end. High pass by Raderick. Did you see the spiral? There was hardly one. And we talked about the difference throwing in that first quarter that it wouldn't be as easy in this quarter into this win. There's your starter, Corey Bramlett, on the headsets on the far sideline. Raderick looks at a third down. They need to take it out to the 43. Raderink going to run it, spun around, now tries to throw the ball, and it's batted in the air. And boy, he was close to being beyond the line of scrimmage. I like the idea of playing two quarterbacks, but sometimes you stop the momentum when you got a guy like Bramlett is doing so well, and then all of a sudden you bring up the backup quarterback. It's a cold night. He makes some bad decisions in that series. And you don't take advantage of the momentum you have. 94, Chris Johnson, a freshman out of Harvey, Louisiana, almost came up with the interception. Bruce Davis with the pass rush. And here's the punt into the win. This thing's just going to die. It will come down out of bounds. And let's see where they spot this one. It is not very far. And they say at the 43-yard line, Adam Brooks finding out that into the wind, a little bit tougher. Only 23 yards on the boot. You know exactly where you are, Las Vegas, Nevada, as we're here for the Pioneer Pure Vision Las Vegas Bowl. And, Mike, you weren't wild about that switch no. by the Cowboys. No, not a good time to do it against the wind. And when you're throwing into the wind, that's not the time to bring up the backup. 
First down, they throw the football. That's Bragg, and he'll have the first down. Ball came loose. UCLA recovered it. And making the recovery, that's Lewis, the tight end. And let's see if they say there was indeed a fumble. And it looks as though, yep, there's a bean back on the field. So that's exactly what they're saying. Going back to that decision to bring up and the backup quarterback, a cold night, too where you're standing on the sideline, then you come in, you're facing UCLA's defense, it's mad, and then the win. Not a good move, and I know you like to play two quarterbacks. Maurice Drew, the tailback, he gets the handoff, and they string it out near sideline. That's a good running play. It's gonna be close to five yards, down around the 39. Hofschneider makes the stop. Now let me tell you what has happened on previous possessions. UCLA has not had one possession where they had more than five plays. Now they've got the win, a running play, they do a pass play. They got to put some stuff together here now. I'm going to predict they're going to move the ball down here and score. I think they're going to get momentum back on this series. Now, if they don't, I'm wrong, but I think they're going to move the ball down here. Well, they go again. Here's Drew spinning inside the 35-yard line down to around the 34. He's close to the first down. I don't think he's going to have it. But that is uh, Sharner, the middle linebacker, number 30. And they better get on the board because they're, they're inviting this Wyoming team and crowd to get in this football game. The longer you can stay with them, the better the upset becomes. Well, Mike, when you look at the offensive line, an average of 307 pounds per man, to only 255 for the Wyoming front four. Here goes the running play with the first down down to the 30-yard line, and galloping his way through was Maurice Drew, the sophomore out of Antioch, California. Derek Martin finally put a stop on him. Ron, you're talking about the running game. Dun Dusty Hofsnyder, we talked about him being 5'10 and 257. He has really handled it in there. And the coaches talked about when they said on players laugh at him, but they don't laugh on Sunday when they watch the tape of his performance. First and 10, play action, got a man over the middle, throws it deep, and it is caught. Touchdown, Taylor. But oh boy, he stepped up late in the year against both Oregon and Southern Cal, and he steps up here tonight and gets the Bruins on the scoreboard. I go back to the switch and quarterbacks. The momentum of this game has changed because the field position into the win, the punt, and all of a sudden now UCLA going back to the run. Now the play action pass, they're back in this game. Medlock tries to make it a three-point ball game, and he does. UCLA, 56 yards in five plays after the short punt into the wind. And look at what an athletic play and grab by Junior Taylor, the junior out of Mesa, Arizona. Let's take a break. Fancy back, it's lined up inside, but his movies, he breaks a post, but then he breaks back, gives him a double move to get the corner head up. That's a good move there. Second move was what got him free, and then a great catch over his head. Boy, I talked about the great athletic move. This ball a little bit behind him, and he was plenty of good athlete enough to go up and bring that one down and score the touchdown. A good if, double move route. So the Bruins on the scoreboard and a lot more life. The, uh, the body language on this side of the field is a lot changed. different from what it was in that first quarter. Midlock with the boot taken at the eight yard line. 20, breaking off a tackle is Bo Knight. And I'll tell you, Bo Knight's doing everything tonight. <laughs> well, tonight's Aflac trivia question. Who was the MVP of Wyoming's last bowl victory? Remember, we told you it's been 11 seasons ago. Who was the MVP in their last victory? Of course, that's their last victory. It's 11 <laughs> seasons since yeah. they went. No clue. But they've had a lot of good players come out of this school. Corey Bramlett. Check, I think about right off the bat. 
gives it Conrad Dobler. Run. So let's see what Corey Bramlett can do as he comes off the bench. Throws this pass out. Complete. 35. Maybe one more yard. And Barge, that's the end of the way. Wesley Walker was out there to make the tackle. And now you bring in, you back in Corey Bramlett. And uh, now he's got to get him re-energized. His offensive football team because they've been able to throw the football. Radarink, who came in for that last series, sending uh, in the plays from the sideline. <laughs> Joseph Harris, the tailback. And they'll give it to him. And going to be close. Nope. Uh, he's going to be out to the 40 yard line. That'll be the end of the way. You talked about Las Vegas, the bowl here. They do a great job, Tina. And, uh, and what they uh, put together here, Ron, this is a great place to have a bowl game. The kids have enjoyed themselves. They've had a great time. You talked about the lack of clocks being sold here. A lot of aspirin being sold here. Oh. Six and a half minutes. That's where we're about to hit right now. Left until halftime. Wyoming leads it by three on third down conversions. One of six. Got the pass. Has it complete? It's a 44-yard line, and that's going to be short of the first down. That is a short tackle by Keyes, who came over to make the play of Michael Ford. The big play on this drive was the first down play where they really made Wyoming lose two yards, and then they never can recover. Now all of a sudden, UCLA and their defense, Larry Kerr, has got a beat on Wyoming. Adam Brooks, the last one, he got very high, and the wind just uh, snuffed it out. Here's the boot. Boy, this one may not go 10 yards. Off the side of his foot, wind got it, pushed it out of bounds, and let's see, they're going to say whoa. out of bounds, whoa, at the 44-yard line. That is an 11 yard punt. When you're punting into a win, you got to punt it low. Just like golf, get that nine iron up there, it could wind up any place. Let's take a break. Jim yes. Kick, young man that played with a fellow by the name of Larry Zonka on a Miami team that was. I'd say pretty powerful. Yeah, Butch <laughs> Cassidy and Sundance Kid. I tell you, he, he ran for 135 yards and two touchdowns and a 28 to 20 win over the Seminoles. Maurice Drew gets the carry and a hit at the line of scrimmage. That is a good defensive play. Tool, one of the first men, along with John Windling, to make the tackle for Wyoming. And I think for Wyoming not to totally lose momentum in this ball game. They need to have a couple of more of those and force a punt by UCLA. Well, a lot of line movement by Wyoming to try to free up their smaller defensive linemen. So far, it's worked. UCLA was zone blocking team. Picks up uh, defenders in the areas. Marquis, the tailback. They send him out to the far side. Ball is thrown, and that's got to be grounding. Should be. Yep, he was straight back, doesn't threw it at the feet of some linemen. Uh, John Flora was applying the pressure, and I'll tell you, Drew Olson is down. He is injured. Hurt his ankle in the USC game, and... Uh... Good pressure by Wyoming. Again, a line twist where they both exchange responsibilities, the defensive tackle in the end, and get free against the offensive line of UCLA. Could see he was being tackled low and then got hit high. And uh, Hofschneider, one of the men in on the play, as they continue to look at Drew Olson, the junior quarterback out of Piedmont, California. David Corral will come into the ball game number seven. He is a senior out of the Woodlands, California. 6'2", 225 pounds. He's warming up on the sideline now. In a cold night, you've got to throw the football on the sideline. I've never understood in football why the uh, 
quarterback, backup quarterback, doesn't throw a lot during the football game. It's like a relief pitcher. Let's go to the sideline, and Aaron Andrews, what do you have for us? Well, Ron, bad news on Wyoming's side of the things. I spoke with trainers running back Ivan Harrison. He looks like to be out for the rest of the game right behind me, icing his left knee. It is sprained. They're going to reevaluate him during halftime, but trainers have said he looks like he is out tonight, guys. Okay, and Drew Olson, they are still administering aid to him, and now the training staff as they continue to look at that knee, they're going to help him up. And hopefully, now that this is good news, I would think. Yep, he's walking off under his own steam. And we'll see if he's not back quickly. Here is real irony. Yesterday, Kenny Stabler was the featured speaker at the banquet, the kickoff luncheon here. And after the meeting was over, Drew Olson came up and shook hands with him. And, and uh, Kenny said, are you, are you the starting quarterback, right? And he said, yes, I am. And Kenny said to him, just remember one thing, son. Keep getting up. Keep getting up every time. <laughs> and right now, probably Drew Olson is thinking about those very words Kenny. by Kenny Stabler. He said, just keep on getting up, son. Kenny's a great guy and a great quarterback. Should be in the Hall of Fame. Yep. Look, we're going to throw on first down. He's going to put it on top. Battle with single coverage, and the ball is knocked away as Junior Taylor, the intended receiver, and Derek Martin was the man who made the play. Derek Martin, is Joe Glenn said, he's as good a corner as I've ever coached. I like to call. Stride for stride. Yeah, I, I like to too. call because they're looking for a run, a cold quarterback coming off the bench, and you not only throw, you go up on top and try to get a big one there. Marsh is the deep man. Cluey, the last one he booted with the win, just kept on going. Almost out of Boyd Stadium. Here's the boot. Driving high spiral. And he's going to run away from it. Going to bounce inside the five-yard line. And they will take it over at around the three. Touched dead by Rodney Van. That was a great play by Van. 59 yards on the boot. Now and we Ron. keep talking about the difference in what the weather has made. And you made an interesting point in the second half. Whoever saves quarter number four for the win, that could be the difference in this football yeah, game. Yeah, Joe Glenn has a decision to make at uh, halftime when he comes out, whether he, he's got the choice of taking the win in the third quarter or deferring to or taking it in the fourth quarter. So it's his choice. So Joseph Harris continues to operate a tailback. And they'll give it to him and hit it knocked down after a gain of two. That's Justin London. Justin, boy, he has battled injuries all year long. A great uh, athlete and is said to be by the coaches, really, the spiritual leader of this defense. And they say to a man that when he's healthy, that he is the best defender that UCLA has. He's good, Ron. He against USC he had eight tackles, forced a fumble, and an interception. But they're going to give it to Harris. Tries the left side. He can't do anything fancy right here. The last thing in the world that Joe Glenn and his staff want to do, and that is turn the ball over and give an easy touchdown to the Bruins to put them in front. Kyle Morgan on the stop. You've got a short memory of that punter. The punt against that win. Oh, so you're... you've got to get a first down right yeah. here because it's an eternity on the scoreboard right now. 337. So you got to pick up a first down here. And UCLA's got three timeouts left. Well, I'll tell you, this is bad news. I think it's Harris who's down on one knee. And they've already lost Ivan Harrison, their starting tailback. And it goes without saying they can ill afford to lose their second running back of the night. It'll be interesting to see who they're going to come in with because what we were told when we, I was asking them about the depth chart, uh, you know, a lot of times people carried three and four tailbacks. They listed two. C.R. Davis run number 33 is a junior. And they list him as a fullback, yeah. actually. One back. When you play a one-back offense, you can use one back. He yeah. could be a fullback or a tailback, but he better be able to block. Well, Harris had suffered a knee sprain and came back late in the season, and let's hope that that is not a reoccurrence of that. Third down. They're going to take it all the way out 
to the 13-yard line to keep this drive going, or they got to punt into that wind again. Bramlett running for his life, and the ball, did he catch it? No, nope, could not hold on at the 15. So, time for Joe Glenn to cross his fingers, take a very deep breath, and say, young man, hey, you got to kick this thing for all you're worth. You talk about Joe Glenn keeping, uh, taking his breath. Every Wyoming fan right here in this stadium, there's a bunch are going to hold their breath right Brooks, here. Brooks to punt his last two kicks, a 20-yarder and an 11-yarder. UCLA has been close to blocking it. And here's his boot. And this one's not going to go very far, but it is far better than the last one that he kicked. And Scott Parker was the man who punted that one. Chris Fowler, let's check back in the studio with you. Okay, Ron, the Dodge halftime report. Trevor Markland joining me. A gutsy quarterback performance in our first bowl game tonight. We'll talk about Dave Wansett's challenges of Pittsburgh, and we'll take you to wonderful Waikiki for a preview of the Hawaii Bowl tomorrow. And you mentioned good quarterback play so far this year in bowl season. How about the bowl that'll have the best two quarterbacks playing? Which one is that? I think it's the Orange Bowl, Mark. <laughs> and I'll tell you why. You're ruining it. I want to tease it. I'll tell you why Dave Wansett is the perfect fit at the University of Pittsburgh. Talk about that Hawaii Bowl. I bet you Ron and Mike were wishing they were at the Hawaii Bowl right oh, now. It's about 85 degrees. Very Warm nice and white kiki. That's coming up at halftime, Ron. No, but Mark, you'll be proud. I got so much deodorant on my feet, they're slipping every direction in my boots. First down. Play action. Looking. Still looking. Pressure coming and. He's going to try to run it inside the 25. Oh, good heavens, what a shot he took out of bounds. Not out of bounds, but right on the sideline. And you can see Corral is up, and he's excited. I think he's excited because he got up. <laughs> the guy Tool put the hit, hit on him. This is one where everybody's covered. David Corral does a wise thing. He picks up what he can pick up before he gets drilled by Tool. What did the coaches say about Tool? They said just one statement will say exactly what he's all about. He was raised on a ranch, and uh, he, he just he he's thinks a he's a cowboy on everything that happens. He is a hard-nosed guy. Maurice Drew, big opening on the right side, is going to take this one down to the 16. Most importantly, if you're a Bruin fan, that is a first down as Tool and Rocket combine on the stop. But now here come the Bruins with two minutes and 50 seconds showing on the clock, trying to move in front as we head toward halftime. Well, Mark May talked about the Hawaii game, and uh, we, we have a great game going on right here. UCLA trying to get the lead with the running game. Murray Strew getting heated up. Drew again, the lone setback. Wyoming comes with the blitz. They go left side and nothing doing. That is a good push by the defensive front of the Wyoming Cowboys. 45, Austin Hall, a sophomore out of Sheridan, Wyoming, and John Flora combining on the stop for the Cowboys. I'm sure Tom Cable, the offensive coordinator, is going to talk the offensive line. See, this is the Broncos offense. Uh, Carl Durrell worked with Mike Shanahan. On the front side of the zone play, you want to create a seam. On the back side, you want to cut so that you can quarterback, or the running back can cut back against the grain. Uh, rolls the pocket, goes for the end zone, got him in. Craig Bragg's hands, no, he caught it, touchdown. 17 yards in the pass play, and Bragg scores, and the Bruins go on top. You know, it's, it's plays of inches in football. You never know when the play's going to turn around. That special team's play, where they down the punt inside the three-yard line, was big for this touchdown. Well, let's give credit to the offensive line of UCLA. Last season, they gave up 51 sacks. This year, only 17. And again, really good protection as they roll the pocket. He throws the completion, and here's Bragg as he caught it. Got hit as the ball got there, but he held on, and it's touchdown UCLA. Well, you see Drew Olson walking to the locker room with a member of the training staff and you can look at his left knee encased in ice. 
man coverage. You got a free safety sitting in center field. Craig Bragg's going to run a corner route, a, a smash route, but they call it a smash route. The outside receiver is going to run a hook at five yards. Corner route by Bragg. Open the free safety. Didn't get over top to help in the man coverage. So it looks as though with the Olsen headed to locker room uh, with his knee wrapped up in ice, it could be David Corral for the remainder of the night. And look at this. In the scoring tonight, we talk about the difference in the wind and what effect it's had on this game. Every point that has been scored by each team has come with the wind. Bonite. 25 30 stiff arm flag back downfield and a nice return is going to be wiped out by a penalty Ron here's a big thing here if you're Joe Glenn and co offensive coordinator Bill Cockhill you better get a first down right here because there's 141 on this clock but UCLA has all three timeouts, so they have a chance to tack on some more points here. And that right, let me ask you a question. Let's look toward the second half, and he does have the decision to make since they won, they won the toss, they deferred in the first half. What do you do? I think I would take the wind into third quarter and try to build up what I can do and hold on in the fourth quarter. I want the momentum when I come out of the second half because I'm reeling right now. I've been punched and knocked against the uh, ring. C.R. Davis continues to operate a tailback. He's the number three tailback. Bramlett stands deep in the pocket, looking. Now going to run. Here comes pressure. Boy, does he take a shot from guess who? Justin London. We talked about that when he's healthy, he's the best UCLA defender, and he looked like it right there. Too much time. Ran off the clock before UCLA called timeout. So the Bruins stopped the clock. One minute and 25 seconds. Showing on the stadium clock, it'll be... A second down and about 13 yards for the first down. I go back in the first half, Ron, here in the, in the, when the, they brought him the backup quarterback, J.J. Ratterink, against the win. They had great field position. Joe Glenn, now that's a decision that they have set up before the game. I'm not questioning that because you have quarterbacks. You like to play two quarterbacks cold night against the wind and everything's going your way it's all like Bing Crosby going my way uh, it was going his way but that move has turned this football game around in the punny game against the wind is not good they better get a first down here yeah you're right the UCLA Cowboys. still with two timeouts Joe Glenn, really on the officials on the far sideline, have no idea what uh, what he is upset about. In case you joined us late, Ivan Harrison, the starter uh, at tailback, out of the game, we think, for the remainder of the contest because of an injury. Joseph Harris, the number two tailback, he has been injured, and they're going with C.R. Davis, the number three guy who's a junior out of Phoenix, at the tailback position. So... Cowboys have got to do a lot of things to uh, kind of tape and mend this thing and put it back together. And what that tells you is they're going to throw the football, or Bramlett's going to become the running back at quarterback. UCLA shows blitz, and they stay at home. Bramlett right over the middle, throws a little safety valve, and he dropped the football. And that was C.R. Davis tried to run with it before he collected it. And that stopped the clock doing UCLA a favor. They don't have to use anything. Now they can use one of those two timeouts after this down if they don't get the first. Look at the difference in body language. The offense of Wyoming before they switched those quarterbacks, well, they were confident. But right now they're dropping footballs there. They're confused a little bit. Bramlett's got to come up with a big play. You just saw Bruce Davis, number 44. He is one of the uh, expert uh, defensive players that rushes the passer well, but they give it to the draw, 
to C.R. Davison on the draw. He'll have enough for the first down as he takes it out around the 25-yard line and stopped finally by Page. Wyoming well, fans are breathing again. That was a big play. 67 seconds left until intermission. 16 yards on the draw play to Davis. Bramlett over the middle and underthrown and incomplete. That'll stop the clock at 58. Tyler Holden is the man that he wanted. Joe Glenn knows right now by his play calling that he's still got to try to put points on the board. A lot of coaches would be thinking about right now killing that clock and running the football with the punting game the way it is. Corey Bramlett looks at a second down and 10 from the shotgun. Here comes pressure, and the ball is thrown complete at the 38-yard line to Dustin Pleasant. And I'll tell you, Bruce Davis, number 44, we just talked about it. he was one of the expert rushers uh, on the defensive team. That's what they bring him in for. And he really put a lick on the quarterback, uh, Bramlett, as he delivered the football. But Corey Bramlett made that play work because his scrambling ability and rolled to the right to give Pleasant time enough to get open. So it is first and 10. They scrimmage from their own 38. Here comes pressure, and he's going to be sacked. Hit behind the line by Kevin Brown, the big sophomore out of uh, Los Angeles, who this time last year was on the offensive side of the football, and uh, they have now moved him back to his home spot of defense. Ron, now I wouldn't run the football, but that loss, having second and 18, I'd force UCLA to use their last time out. They have one left, and I'd take it to the house here in the first half. So it looks as though uh, it's going to be Kevin Fulton who will come in to the backfield for Wyoming. Haven't seen him tonight. In fact, he is not included on the depth chart. You know when you get down and they're not on the depth chart, there's trouble in River City or Sin City. So we'll see if the youngster uh, gets a chance to carry the football or if they throw the football to him that's the other problem now all of a sudden you want to run the football to kill the clock and you got your fourth guy in the running back position do you hand it to him second down 18 yards to go they got to take it all the way out to the 48 to pick up the first down well, here are the numbers for the quarterback Corey Bramlett with the win, 7 of 9, 126 yards against the win, 3 of 7, 14 yards. It's been the difference. This has been the story of the first half, the win. He's not wearing a jersey either. Again from the shotgun. Steps up, looking, drills it, caught it at the 45-yard line, and that is just short of the first down. Clock running at 32, now 31. Dustin Pleasant on that 15-yard reception. Good throw by Corey Bram Bramlett again. This is a good confidence builder for Wyoming's offense. C.R. Davis back at the ball game. We had movement. It looked like Chase Johnson. On the left side, came out of his stance before the ball was snapped. With this win situation, you can't throw a deep, deep pass. Pass time on the offense, number 73. 55 yards, 55, 0 third down. You have a range 
with this win. Uh, I'd say 15 to 20 yards is the route that you can throw it. You can't throw anything over that. See, it's interesting. You don't see necessarily the flags just going nuts, but when Rocky Good just turned on his microphone, he, he just was getting a gust of wind going through it. On the field, you can really tell a difference. In the punting game, also in the passing game, the clock runs down, and we are at halftime. Well, there is Olsen, and he has just come out of the locker room and is on crutches. And, Mike, I would have to guess that that means that his play for tonight done. is done. So it's halftime with our score, UCLA 14 and Wyoming 10. Now here's Chris Fowler with the Dodge Halftime Report. Chris? All right, Ryan, thank you. So the Bruins will try to protect that lead in the second half with a quarterback who has basically zero. Down to the sideline, Aaron Andrews, you have a report for us. Is this Drew Olson? As we saw going into the second half, he is out with that sprained left knee. Now, talking to Wyoming side of the ball, they deferred that opening toss. I had a chance to speak with head coach Joe Glenn about what he's going to do in the second half. They're going towards the win. He said, We've got the ball, we've got to do something with it. Now's the time, guys. Okay, Mike, so that's a tough decision uh, that uh, Joe Glenn has to make. And it looks as though uh, he is going to try to take advantage. But but again, it's one of those things you got to make hay while you can. What if the wind stops? Yeah, I, I think you have to take the win in the third quarter. Now, Ron, the other thing, a problem for Joe Glenn, he's, he's lost three running backs. Now, on UCLA side, they've lost their starting quarterbacks. So backups are going to decide this football game. Third quarter, UCLA, what do you look for? Just run, 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 the run. Run the ball, try to stay, you know, stay even until you get to win, uh, get some big plays. A kicking game still close to blocking a kick. UCLA, the punter for Wyoming is having problems, so go after it. Right now, let's take a look at the Dodge first half stats. 219 yards uh, for Wyoming, only 156 for UCLA. But boy, what a difference. First quarter and second quarter, the difference between the two ball clubs. Yeah, and you look at the third down efficiency, neither team is having a real good fortune on third down. So Medlock will kick it off. And it will be Wyoming on offense to begin this second half of play. Bo Knight and Marsh, the two deep men. And here's the kick into the win. It's a spinner, going to be taken by Bo Knight at the nine yard line. And Bo Knight breaks by one tackler, loses his footing, trying to bounce it out to the right side. Tonight's game track is brought to you by Pioneer. Wyoming takes an early 10 to nothing lead. And then the corral comes into the ball game, not used very often, but because of the injury to Drew Olson, and throws a touchdown pass to put UCLA on top, and that's how we stand at 14 to 10. Story of the win in the first half. If you have it, you had good fortune. Play action, going to go on top on first down, and there's the strike. 45, 40, down to the 30 is Tyler Holden, and higher Tyler Holden all the way to the 11-yard line. That's why you take the wind in the third quarter, and come out throwing, they get a big play out of Bramlett. Bramlett's been impressive tonight. They run the post route, wide open is Holden, and then he does a good job of making extra yards after the catch. Trey Brown, you could see him making the tackle, trying to knock that football loose. But there is a statement right there as Joseph Harris has checked back into the lineup. He was injured in the first half, number 32, and he's back into the game. Play action. Rolls to the right for the end zone, thrown just a little too far. Corey Bramlett had the opportunity to run on that play. Watkowski, the intended receiver. You can see him playing out for the football. And then a photographer <laughs> gets knocked over the restraining barrier there.
Double tight end set. Cox and Watkowski. And they go with a running play to Harris. And Harris is going to be hit and knocked down at the nine-yard line. It's a gain of a couple as Justin London comes over to make still another tackle uh, in tonight's ball game. You talked about London. Uh, Spencer Hefner is not in the leading tackler for UCLA. Is lost in this ball game before this ball game, and yeah, they Hefner, miss him. Hefner had uh, orthoscopic surgery about uh, 12 days ago, and obviously it is too quick for him to come back. And the youngster had been not only an all-conference performer, but on some All-American teams. Third down and eight, and they go from the shotgun. They need to take it to the one-yard line to keep the drive going. Retreating, now steps up, going to try to run, and he is sacked at the 14-yard line. Great pressure coming from Justin Hickman, a sophomore out of Glendale, Arizona. Hickman was a junior college player, and UCLA usually doesn't take many junior college players. Glendale Community College, he was overlooked as a high school player. He was 225 pounds, but now he is really beefed up. Yossi comes in to attempt the field goal. It's going to be an attempt of 31 yards. He'll place it down on the near hash mark. Good pass. He missed it. He pushed that thing off to the right, and the UCLA crowd just realizing what happened and a standing ovation down in front of us for the defense. We go back to Joe Glenn. Talked about they have to be good in the red zone. They haven't been good. Missed the field goal. Good drive, but they come up with zip. Well, he kicked it, and he kicked it straight. And it looked as though that that's exactly where he was aiming, right? Yeah, Joe Glenn, uh, you saw his frustration. Now UCLA, I think they have the advantage because they're a running football team. When you have win problems, if you can run the football, that's the equalizer. Manny White and Maurice Drew, the two setbacks. Short drop, quick out pass, and incomplete. Junior Taylor tried to run with it before he caught it. David Corral in here, and uh, Drew Olson hurt. David Corral is a junior, can make in a statement for but himself let tonight. Let me ask you a question. You haven't scouted this kid because he hasn't played that much, right. so you have no idea what to expect, do you? No, uh, but he looks to me like he's very confident when he came in when Olsen was hurt. Really looks like he's got great leadership. Wyoming showing blitz. They come with it. Flags are down. And the running play will be whistled to stop as Maurice Drew was carried up. <laughs> it looks like UCLA is going to start like they just started in the first quarter. Making mistakes. Ball start, number 73 on the offense. Going to be five yards from the previous third down. Ed Blanton's called for that penalty. We talked about him blocking against the 5'10 Dusty Hosnider. So maybe the little guy and the little wrestler is having his way. Well, you know, it's interesting. Uh, uh, Joe Glenn, the head coach at Wyoming, nicknamed uh, Ed Blanton this week the SS Blanton. At 6'9, 345 pounds. Oh, big opening to the right side. It has five, has 10, counted off at 13 yards on the running play. Much to the delight of the faithful from UCLA. That is a heck of an effort. Vieira McCloskey and Ed Blanton on that right side opening the way. Tool coming in to make the tackle. But one more look at it. Look at this gaping hole right here for Maurice Drew. Zone play on the outside where your front side blocks high and the backside cuts. First time that Drew has a run of over eight yards tonight. You see his numbers 13 for 52, an average of four per try. And Corral got a man over the middle, throws it high and in and out of the hands of Lewis. Mercedes Lewis, the tight end, got turned around on that one, couldn't gather it in. Ron, on the back side of the zone play, watch the cut right here. You try to cut, now you stand up right here. You block high, and now you try to find the seam on the front side. On the back side, you cut the defensive lineman. Maurice Drew taking advantage of that. That's Mike Shanahan, the Denver Broncos running game that Carl Durrell brought 
to UCLA. UCLA quickly back to the line of scrimmage and the lineman getting set. Two tight ends. And he'll just turn around and give it to the running back. And there's a big opening. And Drew, boy, he is tagged by Ron Rocket. And if Rocket doesn't make the tackle, he might have broken that thing. Same thing. As I just talked about Ron. He cut that back, Murray Strew. Here's a look into the offensive lineman as you break to the backside. Good vision by Maurice Drew to see the open seam. You can see number 73 at Blanton. The big uh, tackle we were talking about with a good job of blocking on that play. Third down and short. They need about one yard for the first. And on the running play, they're going to have the first down to Drew. Ron Rocket comes up from the secondary to make the tackle. And Manny White with a very good block on the yeah, play. Good, good fullback, tailback type player, Manuel White. Your worst nightmare if you're Joe Glenn and you take the win in the third quarter as a UCLA would drive the ball, run the football, and run this clock down. There's a good look at White, a senior out of Canyon Country, Valencia, California. And they go straight ahead with the running play. Not much there. Sharner comes up to make the stop on Manny White. Tom Cable, the offensive coordinator, said about Manuel White that he's the most valuable guy on this football offensive team because he runs, blocks, catches the ball out of the backfield, elected captain by his teammates. Well, light guy. A light, lot like Ronnie Brown from Auburn. Manny White in the sideline on this play. Second down and 10. Corral, they go with the running play again. And it's Drew who hops his way for about three, maybe four yards, just short of midfield. Did you see what Wyoming did on that play? They really snuck up with an extra defensive guy. When you have the backup quarterback in, you know he hasn't had a lot of snaps uh, with the starting offensive team. So you want to make him try to guess what you're in and try to get him. He's not as efficient checking out as the starting quarterback Drew Olson would be. Crowd coming to life as Marquis comes into the ball game at tailback. Third down. They need the 45-yard line of Wyoming. Swings this one out of the backfield. Has it complete to Marquis and puts the head down. And with the second effort, he is going to have the UCLA first down. And Mike Godfrey, what you were just talking about, the fear of the Wyoming coaching staff is actually uh, kind of happening right here because they're not only moving the football, they're running time off the clock, getting us closer to that fourth quarter when they get the football. Yeah, and that, that's the fear you have when you take the win in the third quarter. You got to make some hay. Now, there's still a lot of time, 9.03, but that's Joe Glenn's watching that clock, too. Well, it's moving quickly, I can tell you that. Under nine minutes to play, third quarter. Marquis again at tailback. You see the deep set, and they'll give it to him off the right side. Tries to redirect it close to the 35-yard line. They'll say the 36. And Aaron Robbins, defensively for the Cowboys, there to make the stop. Ron, Wyoming can't do this because when they go against the wind, they have to throw the football. They've already uh, had their tailbacks get hurt, and uh, Harris came back in, but they, they're down a little bit in the running game. They can't really run the football like UCLA can run it. So the advantage is all to UCLA right now. Nine plays on this drive for 44 yards. Far and away, the longest drive of the night by the UCLA Bruins. On second down, fumble the snap from center. And we don't see any bouncing around with the defense, so I would assume, yes, it has been recovered by David Corral. And they'll lose about a yard on the play, so it's third down. And now they're going to take it to the, about just inside the 31-yard line to keep the drive going. Looked like he just didn't get the snap from the center. Didn't close down on it, yeah. No. 
So now the folks from Wyoming are up and cheering. That defense saying you got to hold them right here. Third down. You can see the yellow line just inside the 31 yard line. They keep it on the ground, running play. Turns the corner, has the first down. And Maurice Drew with a huge play right there. Out of bounds and stops the clock with 7.18 in the third. Ron Rocket with still another tackle and give credit to Mercedes Lewis the tight end with an outstanding block on the play well you said it you said he was one of the best looking tight ends and I th I think he may be the best tight end in the country hey Mike you know that's one of the things the coaches also talked about not only has he improved overall but his blocking has uh, really come along which of course when he does make it to the next level that's something he's going to be called on to do often and well First down. Corral sets deep in the pocket. Now going to deliver it and got a man. Touchdown, and that's Craig Bragg. What a job. The first points scored into the win tonight, and it comes at the 7-11 mark for the UCLA Bruins. 25 yards in the pass play. Let's see if his feet are in. Yes. Yep. What a great throw by Corral. He stepped up, good pass protection. He waited for the opening to brag. Medlock with the extra point attempt, and he's got it. So with 7-11 left in the third, our new score, UCLA 21 to 10. 80 yards and 12 plays. 21 to 10, Mike, what happened on the play? David Corral does a nice job here. As a quarterback, you got to find a throwing lane. He steps up, finds the throwing lane, and hits Craig Bragg with a perfect strike. Here's the route by Bragg. Breaks inside. Really did a good job on Terrence Butler getting open. When you could see that side judge was right there, and he saw that both feet were in bounds, and they scored the touchdown. And here comes a squib kick on the ground. Picked up at the 29-yard line, and uh, the tackle is going to be applied at the 37. So let's take a timeout. 7.07 left in this uh, third quarter. UCLA by 11. Yards as Wyoming goes with the running play, and it's uh, Joseph Harris straight ahead. I know you got to keep him honest. But they got to look at that clock. We're now under seven minutes to play with the wind. Hey, you talked about Corral, Ron. He, he transferred in January 2004 uh, from Santa Monica College, where he threw 18 touchdown passes. So UCLA made a good signing there. Well, that's for sure. Second down and long for the Cowboys of Wyoming as they scrimmage just short of their own 40-yard line. Bramlett, five-step drop. Drills this one and has it complete at midfield, and that'll be enough for the first down. Complete to Jovan Bonite. And he has been not just the go-to guy, he's really been the guy that that has uh, hurt the Bruins, with the exception of the long catch by Tyler Holden. Watch this uh, cushion, really. They're really off of uh, Bonite because he has burnt UCLA early in this ball game, running by the corners. Now they're giving him a big cushion so they get the out. Bonite now four catches for 96 yards. We got 95 on the. Uh, we'll we'll split hairs on that one. Average of almost 24 per catch. Old Knight's favorite receiver was uh, Peter Ward. That's why he's wearing this jersey, number nine. On first down, play action deep over the middle. He had him there, and the ball is dropped by Barge. And I don't know if uh, that defender got enough of a hand on it to cause a distraction. And UCLA has a defensive lineman down, face down at the 48-yard line. Ron, now what they did on the last play, they played the corner up tight on bowl night. And uh, then they had the safety over the top. So Larry Kerr knows he has to stop Jovan uh, bowl night in the second half. So he's double covering the wide receiver 
Looks like the injured player's defensive tackle, C.J. Nusulu. He's a junior out of Barstow, California. There's Larry Kerr right there, the defensive yeah. coordinator. He's a great uh, guy and a very good defensive coach. He coached over at Colorado State for a long time and uh, he really solid with his defensive planning. 21 to 10, UCLA on top. Didn't start out that way. Not a very friendly situation as Wyoming went on top 10 to nothing and now 21 unanswered points by the Bruins. Flags all over the place. Hunter Richards came out of his stance. All start number 67 offense. Field is five yards from the previous spot. Second down. Can't dig a hole here. Can't get long yardage situations. Eight penalties for 84 yards against the Cowboys of Wyoming. Safety over the top of Bow Knight. Safety in corner. Pressing him. Pass delivered. Got this one complete to Barge. Holds on to it and did not get out of bounds. So the clock will continue to run. And it'll be third down and long. Page, the defender, coming over to make the tackle. No running game for Wyoming. They got to throw the football. I mean, they, they're a one-sided offensive football team at this point. With the injuries at running back must do it through the air. Wyoming, 63 yards rushing tonight. Well, the Bruin sideline trying to get the crowd into this one. They got to take it down to the 40-yard line as here comes pressure. The ball is delivered and dropped in and out of the hands of Wodkowski, the tight end. And since he was juggling it, I don't think it would have been a reception even if he had brought it back into his body because he was then at the sideline. Bramblin drops back, steps up, gets the ball out to his tight end. Should have been caught. Looked like his thigh pad hit the ball as he was taking a step and knocked it out. Yeah, almost his hands in the wrong uh, direction. Adam Brooks to punt it away. And that is uh, Craig Bragg who is back deep. Here's the boot. He almost had that one blocked. Flag is down and no fair catch. Now the big thing is at five or bigger. Chris Horton. No. They're going to call holding on Wyoming. So, Ron, if I'm Carl Durrell, I'm making kick it again. Chris Horton is a man who came close to blocking it. He had a block against Southern Cal. Holden on the kicking team, number 46. Penalty's accepted. It's 10 yards from the previous spot. Still fourth down. He was close on the first punt of the football game. Here's the holding. UCLA comes through, personal protector, tackles, tackles him, and then big penalty because they really turned the field there. Yep. Good field position. And as I said, he had the huge block against SC, blocked the ball that uh, they wound up getting points off of. And Wyoming knows that he is capable of getting that done. A low pass, but he gets the kick away, and it's his best kick of the night. All the way back to the 16-yard line. Bragg right up the middle and going to be tackled as he crosses the 35. And we'll take a timeout. 4.52 remaining in the third. UCLA by 11. Tonight, back on the field, and you know we talked about Corral and the job that he did throwing two touchdown passes. But uh, how about the running back, Maurice Drew? On that last scoring drive, Drew had 46 yards in the scoring drive. He only had 34 total in the first half. And he's going to get the ball a lot in this drive. You'll we'll see him lined up about seven and a half yards behind the quarterback. Gets the ball. And we'll just put a hit down and get what he can. Number 55, Zach Morris, one of the first men, along with Aaron Robinson, the stop. 
And Murray drew uh, against the first opening kickoff good return. UCLA didn't take advantage of it. Then the running play in the zone play breaks outside, picked up a big first down on that play. Here's another run where he works downfield, spins, leg drive for yardage. Fakes this one to Drew. Corral now gets the pass away, and it is caught at the 47 by uh, Bragg. Craig Bragg, the senior out of San Jose. A star is being born. I'm telling you, David Corral is playing lights out here. But he steps up and he moves. He took the hit and threw the ball to Craig Bragg. Impressive showing by the junior quarterback. And I'll tell you, Craig Bragg has been impressive also. Uh, he missed three games this year with a separated shoulder. And uh, he's the career receiving leader, second in career yardage. Five catches for 85 yards for him tonight. Here's the hit being applied to the quarterback, and Flora will get the sack on David Corral. I don't know what he did there, David Corral. He checked off because I saw the running back move up in pass protection. He must have saw something he wanted to take advantage of. Flag way deep in the secondary. You could see the Wyoming player saying, yes, we accept the penalty. Dead ball, personal foul on the offense, number one. Penalty's 15 yards from the previous spot. It's second down. Brandon at Brazil, he's only a freshman out of Fresno. He is a flyer, and he's only six feet, 154 yards. 154 pounds, and he's trying to hide from Carl Durrell right now. Now, he's a little guy, but he better hide. He may get part of that 154 chewed off of him right now. Here's the end of the play. And a lot of talking during this football game between both teams. White and Drew, the setbacks. It's Drew right up the middle, has five, has ten, and he's off. Hit from behind and ringed down inside the 45, but they will give him the 42. And even after that long penalty, uh, it is going to be a third down at about five yards to go. John Winding, Winling on the tackle for the Cowboys. More important, Ron, that clock is ticking right there on the wind. Look at Maurice Drew, over 100 yards now, Mike, on 19 carries, an average of over five per try. He came into the game averaging almost seven yards per rush in attempt. You wonder why those linemen are so much bigger than he. He's only 5'8". Short drop. Tried to look to the right, looked him off, looked back to the left, and there was Austin Hall who will sack him and knock him down for a big loss. It'll be fourth down, UCLA. That was a quick hitch. And he has to throw that football. He doesn't have time to go from one side of the football field all the way over the other side. That's inexperience. Austin Hall with a good hit. So Cluey comes in to punt. And again, Marsh is the deep man for the Cowboys. 21 to 10, UCLA on top. And it's being whistled dead. Dead ball. Ball start on the offense, number two. Penalties five yards from the previous spot, still fourth down. Carl Durrell not happy with the penalties his team's making tonight. Carl, you find out in a hurry, is a no-nonsense guy. He learned his football from a lot of good football coaches. Eight penalties, 64 yards against the Bruins. And here's the boot. This may be the best kick of the night into the wind. Spiral is turning over, and the catch is made at the 11-yard line, and the tackle applied immediately. So after that, the fine stop by Cowan. Let's take a timeout. UCLA by 11. Now at ESPN.com slash Pontiac. And don't forget this. The winning school is going to receive $100,000 toward their general scholarship fund from Pontiac. 
So get online right now, ESPN.com slash Pontiac. Wow, that's a lot of money. Yep, you bet it is. Joseph Harris, number 32, back in the ball game at tailback for Wyoming. And they'll give it to him on first down, and he's going to have a couple of tough yards, and that is just about it. The difference in the second half so far, Larry Kerr has made an adjustment in his pass defense because Bow Knight has had such a good first half. Now all of a sudden, Larry Kerr is saying, hey, I'm going to take him away. I'm going to roll the corner up. I'm going to play the safety behind him. He's not going to beat me tonight. Number nine is not going to get the football as much in the second half as he has in the first half. In the third quarter, UCLA has held the ball for eight minutes and 21 seconds. Wyoming just over four and a half minutes. Pass. Got his man there. Tipped into the air and incomplete as he went for Bow Knight. Ball was just a little behind him. Matt Clark had the cover for the Bruins. Yeah, Matt Clark, the better corner, more experienced, is in pretty good shape here. But the ball is thrown high by Corey Bramlett. Changing coverages against the outstanding receiver. So that stops the clock. Only a minute and 27 seconds for there's, them to have it with the win. There's what you were talking about, first yep. half. Yep. First half, Wyoming had the ball over 17 minutes. And now only 4.55 here in the third. Second and 10 on third down, or third down and 10, I should say. And the hit is applied to Bramlett, and he is sacked by Chris Johnson. He's only a freshman out of Harvey, Louisiana. I keep thinking, Ron, that UCLA is going to block a punt. That'd be Dave Van Close. Well, keep an eye on number 14 because, as I mentioned, Horton got the big block against SC. It has almost gotten two here tonight. And Horton, number 14, lines up right in the middle of the defensive front, so to speak. <laughs> Scott Parker with the kick. And the catch is made juggling it at the 46 yard line i'll tell you why they didn't block it <laughs> they, they that's holding. It. <laughs> there, there's not one flag there are two flags down at the six and i mean there was a tackle being applied oh. now he won't get credit for it <laughs> i'd make him punt it again i'd still come after him and try to block it you got great field position though Got a choice here. I'd make, I'd make him punt it again. Against the kicking team, number 59. Penalty is half the distance to the goal. Still fourth down. Now you've given up great field position, but you've got a team right here, the punt team of Wyoming, that has some problems. Well, you also got them thinking about it. And just thinking, I can't get another holding call here, so you don't hold him and you get the kick block. <laughs> well, they've been close so many times tonight to Again, blocking a punt. Watch number 14, right in the middle of the formation. I see UCLA jumping around some. They're coming after him, but they had to return on. Line drive kick, and they're going to pick up yardage if it doesn't bounce off the face mask and Wyoming has the recovery can you believe that because it's a line drive kick he's trying to catch it on the fly and it came off the face mask and Betchert makes the recovery for Wyoming boy a big play right there they decided not to try to block the kick but come back and return it that's Bragg and the ball was, it was not a good spiral. It was more like a knuckleball. That, Very hard to catch. That was such a low kick. Oh, he had a chance to return that yep. for big yardage. Yep, he really and that's did. that's a big turnover. 34 seconds left, third quarter. Explaining to his teammates on the sideline exactly what went on. Wodkowski in motion. They go with the running play. Boy, picture perfect tackle. Justin London. Can't run the ball. One dimensional football team on offense. Wyoming. UCLA knows they have to stop Bull Knight and they can win this football game because they can't run the ball. 
There's Betrin on the sideline. He's explaining to his teammates his good fortune. He's a tough kid. He's a two-time state wrestling champion when he was in high school. Two seconds, one, and we are at the end of the third quarter. And now it's UCLA's turn to go with the win. So there's a break in the action. UCLA, 21 unanswered points, and that's how we stand, 21 to 10. football game only two first downs and 74 yards with the win that's not what he was looking no, for. No, and the big play oh, now Wyoming can get back in this football game because of fumble by Brank screen pass and that's going to be Harris and Joseph Harris will take it for a short gain on the play so, Mike, right now, without the running game, you know, early on, the Cowboys started the thing of just pitch and catch, short little dinky passes. They're going to have to go back to that, aren't they? They got to find a receiver other than Bull Knight because of a dub on Bull Knight, so they got to find somebody on the other side. They can't run the football, so it's got to be somebody else comes open on the backside of Bull Knight. Bramlett sings it. That's a beautiful pass. Got it complete inside the 35-yard line. Got it to Tyler Holden, the redshirt sophomore out of Littleton, Colorado. He transferred from Northern Colorado. And he may be the guy, Ron, because he's going to get one-on-one -on -one coverage on the backside. Good throw by Bramlett. That may be his best toss into the wind tonight, you know? Good for 18 yards. This time he's going to go under center. And he'll pitch it back to Harris. Tries to turn the corner. And he does. Gets a block. 40, 35. And shoved out of bounds. And that's Kyle Morgan who was there to push him out of bounds and make the defensive play. And I'll tell you what, I think Joseph Harris, it would appear the UCLA trainers are over attending to him and have signaled to Wyoming to come over and help out. Gets into the uh, sideline. Yeah, that barrier, but, first, it, but it's soft. Looked like he gave, but uh, a push. Yeah. And you know, I had mentioned earlier that he had a sprained knee that came late in the season. And I don't know if every time this kind of thing happens that he aggravates that just a little bit more or, or what. But in case you joined us late, Ivan Harrison, the starter, the sophomore out of Kansas City at tailback, uh, injured, out for the ball game. And they brought in C.R. Davis, a junior out of Phoenix. So Joe Glenn has been uh, trying to mend some things with a little uh, paste and wax over there on the far sideline. And let's go down to the sideline and Aaron Andrews, what do you got for us? Well, when you talk about Joseph Harris, I did get a chance to speak to head coach Joe Glenn about him. That was the same knee that was injured. He told me go coming into the second half, he was going to come back out, try it out. Also, C.R. Davis, who was going to take Joseph Harris's spot, he's suffering from an ankle injury right now. Joe Glenn looked at me and goes, why did I even choose this job, guys? <laughs> Send it back up to you. <laughs> Okay, Aaron. Well, Joe knows full well why he chose yeah. the job. Joe is as good a football coach as there is around. You're not named three-time national coach of the year. It win two national titles, one in double-A, one in one double-A. Yeah, Ron, he has a young football team, four seniors that are really playing a lot of football, and they did win their last away game against you and they'll be on this field. Well, C.R. Davis does come into the lineup. As a scrimmage with a first and 10 from the 32 yard line. And now Bramlett with an audible. And it's Davis who comes up to make sure he knows exactly which direction to go, and they're going to call a timeout. Well, that play clock was running on down, so we'll take a break. 13 49 left in the ballgame. Still an 11 point Bruin lead. In Las Vegas Bowl. Tonight's game track brought to you by Pioneer. Olsen left the game with a knee injury. He was double teamed right there and he goes down. And then Corral comes in. Two touchdown passes, both to Bragg. And then Drew 102 yards on the night. 
He has been the mainstay on the ground for the Bruins. Wyoming trying to drive just inside the 32. Pressure coming on the quarterback. Gets to the outside. Bramlett cuts it upfield. It goes down to the 23-yard line. Corey Bramlett with a nice job of scrambling to the open field, and it's good for eight yards. Yeah, they, he's, he is the running game at this point because of the running back injuries. He wants to throw the football. He slides up. Now he knows he's going to take off and pick up whatever he can pick up. Well, so he is very close to the first down. They have spotted it just outside the 22-yard line. You know, Bramlett's going to the sideline, and Radarink comes into the lineup, and you could see Corey was limping a little bit as he headed to the sideline. We'll try to get a report. Here's the pitch back, and now reverse. They can throw off this, and the pass up in the air, underthrown, and caught for the touchdown. Unbelievable as the ball is thrown back to Radarink, the quarterback. Bull Knight threw the football around a former quarterback. We talked about him being recruited by Larry Kerr. He was a quarterback in high school. Larry Kerr, the defensive coordinator at UCLA, told me yesterday he expected Bull Knight to throw a pass. They're going to go for two since it's a 21 to 16 ball game. Well, let's wait a minute. Now, Yossi has come into the line at number 40 and taken back. It is going to be a try for the point, we think. High pass, they get it down, and the kick is up, and right down the middle. So we'll take a timeout, 12 minutes and 50 seconds. We'll hold it right here. Mike, talk about the play and exactly the way they executed it. Larry Kerr, the defense coordinator, knew this was going to happen. He knew Joe Bond Bull Knight was a former quarterback that he recruited. He knew they were going to throw a pass. He underthrew it, but Radarink made a good catch. Mike, the truth of the matter is just what you said. The ball was thrown so badly it slipped out of his hand. And how many times have you seen a pass that was thrown short and the defender all of a sudden can't turn around and get back to help? Yeah. The good call by Joe Glenn is yep. often. Ron, I want to talk about, we talked about uh, the win in this football game. We talked about uh, Joe Glenn deciding in the third quarter whether he was going to take the ball or not. But really, Carl Durrell chose to kick into the win so he made the decision to take the win that is back in the fourth quarter the wind has kind of died down there and uh, Andrews has told us but UCLA really Craig Bragg is drop punt has let Wyoming back in this football game the drive 63 yards in six plays that's after that fumble recovery and now we've had two touchdowns scored into the wind the first time uh, that that has happened for Wyoming tonight the last touchdown by UCLA also was into the wind well they had a chance UCLA had a chance to cement this lead and really with the turnover has now given new life to the Cowboys well, here's the kick, very returnable, and a very short kick into the wind. For the 15, it's Marquis, and Marquis, very good coverage, but the Cowboys is going to be stopped shy of the 25-yard line. Well, it's the NBA on Christmas Day at ESPN and ABC. At 12.30 on ESPN, Detroit will be taking on the Indiana Pacers. And at 3 o'clock on ABC, Shaq returns to Los Angeles. The Heat against Kobe and the Lakers. NBA Christmas Day special presented by American Express. Saturday on ESPN and ABC. You talk about the Heat. Now the Heat's on corral. The quarterback... Wyoming jumping around. Here comes a blitz. Trying to give him some different looks. But he gets the pass off and has it complete for short yardage to Lewis. But the big tight end. Actually, I say short yardage. It's going to be enough for the first down. It's a gain of 12. I like the way UCLA has called plays for the backup quarterback, David Corral. They've given him plays that he can execute. That's a little rollout short pass to a very fine tight end, Mercedes Lewis. Plus the fact that caught Wyoming guessing just right because the blitz was coming in the middle and it left the single coverage on the big tight end. Draw play. Maury 
face. Drew gets hit, spun around, and that is some tough physical defensive play. It is a loss of two yards. Sharner, Randy Sharner, number 30, a linebacker, got penetration on the offensive line in UCLA, made the play. This and also Hofschneider. Yeah, Hofschneider has been a, a, a dynamite player. Wyoming is a young football team that would like to get a win in this football game. Second down and 12. Running play, not going to go for very much. Sharner, the middle linebacker, number 30, comes in to make the tackle. One play turned this whole thing around. The drop punt by Craig Bragg. And now this... Wyoming has more fans here, many more than UCLA, and they have not had a lot to cheer about since... Back in that first half when they led 10 to nothing. This is a good crowd. Now, the Las Vegas Bowl has done a great job. This crowd has been noisy. They've been into this football game. Maurice drew the tailback third down. They need to take it to the 45 and a half yard line. Deep in the pocket. Corner blitz is on. Corral spins around and runs right into the defender again. And that is Derek Martin. Martin the ball. And the ball is loose and recovered by UCLA. Cowboys got it. I beg your pardon. The Bruins came away with the football, but the officials say... I think they're going to say UCLA. He was down. They're still going to have the ball at UCLA. I, well, Wyoming I, thinks they got the football. They're on yeah, the sideline. The offense... That. UCLA's got the ball. They're going to call him down. See, the offense of uh, Wyoming is on the field right now. Well, they better make an adjustment here quickly because... Oh, that was a, that was a mistake. That was a fumble. Unless they're saying forward progress was yeah. stopped and the whistle had been blown. Well, I, I think that's a big call. Went away. Uh, went. That's wrong. That's a fumble. I think they're trying to get this right. Well, he dropped that ball. That was clearly a fumble. This this play could decide this football game, and he clearly fumbled this football. He's almost out to the hash mark. Yeah, he has good. come out trying to defend his team and fight his case. Wyoming has the football. I like to call, Ron, because it was the right call. Wyoming should have had the football. So Wyoming, with an opportunity at the 10.50 mark to put the ball in the end zone one more time following the turnover. They'll have it at the 17-yard line. Boy, that was a bad play there. It just On the get-go. That thing just uh, blew up, so to speak, as, as he headed out and just wound up doing absolutely nothing. I want to go back to that call. Referees are like football teams. When you have a long layoff from the season's end to the bowl game, you get rusty, and uh, football players get rusty. But they made the right call. I like that fact. So with the loss, it's second down. Let's call it second down and 16. UCLA trying to fake show their blitzing, and they do come with two of the inside backers. Fade route, near sideline, intercepted by UCLA, and it's Clark up the far sideline, turns it back to the middle of the field. Hurdles one man, and he's going to take it all the way back to the 48-yard line. Mistake, Corey Bramlett. Oh, geez. Uh, I mean, that was a high fly thrown. Well, boy, you have a chance to get the lead, and you let one fly here. The wind may have taken that football, but that was poorly thrown. Plus the fact Clark. Bo Knight had made an inside yeah. move, and the ball was thrown to the outside. 
You're exactly right. There's the inside move. Matt Clark with the interception. Well, that's the first turnover by the Cowboys tonight at a return of 48 yards as uh, Maurice Drew carries the ball to here. And UCLA would like to take advantage as Clark gets a breather on the sideline, literally. Flag is down. And it's going to be against the Bruins. It'll be a first down and 15. Turnovers. UCLA three. Number eight, five yard penalty. Rom Still first down. While the penalty goes, I want to say a quick recovery to Gates Brown in the hospital, the former uh, Detroit Tiger. American League pinch hitting uh, owns a record. He's in the hospital. We wish him a speedy recovery. So UCLA quickly out of the huddle. Again, it's Drew the tailback. 21 to 17. Corral hands it off to Drew. Nice job of the offensive line blocking. He's going to take it across midfield. And John Windling is the man who makes the stop gain of eight sports center coming up next immediately following our ball game and as the clock runs that's about nine minutes from now good job by drew breaking that ball outside to pick up some good yards well, what he did there also is he gives them an opportunity a very realistic opportunity to get this first down a moment ago they were scrimmaging with 15 yards to pick up the first and he gets a gain of eight right there and they don't have to throw the football and they'll give it to him again backside going to be hit hard at the 42 yard line and driven back by john windling you see why he is <laughs> said to be one of the big hitters in that secondary for the cowboys and now let's see what he got as far as forward progress. That is enough for the first down. Yeah, Wendling, you talked about him. 4-4, four, 40-yard four, uh, dash. He's a fast guy. He is a four-point honor student in high school. So you win with character. And Joe uh, Glenn has got a young football team. is smart, and they play hard. Manny White comes into the backfield along with Chris Marquis. Cowboys show blitz. They come with it, running play, and they give it to Marquis. And uh, the young freshman out of Luling, Louisiana, tackled by John Prater. Right now, UCLA doesn't really care. Wyoming does have two timeouts left, but he certainly can't burn it right now. But that clock is now under yeah. eight minutes, and the next thing you know, it's going to be down to four and three. They pick up one more first down. Then uh, Joe has really got to start doing some... Uh, surveying as to what his opportunities are this is a point in the game where when you have a big offensive line of ucla you wear one down markey gets the ball off the right side that's a good one-on-one -on -one tackle as he spun down at the 34 and it's going to be a third down and they're going to need still about three yards for the first as ron rocket came over to make the tackle on marquee what's happening now is the safeties are playing run all the way yeah. they're sitting as linebackers now if you want to take a shot you might have the post and the big play action pass but since the big play where the sack occurred ucla's taken it away from the corral as far as throwing the football they say hey let's go conservative and uh, let's don't lose this football game running play drew splits through that's going to be a first down and it happened at the 645 mark and now wyoming really has to do a good job defensively or the time is going to get away from them here in this fourth quarter well it looks like the defensive line of Wyoming it's played so well undersized but UCLA now starting to dominate at the line of scrimmage it's been a game of big plays boy look at this uh, one 273 passing Wyoming 175 for UCLA Running play again. Same area, and it's Drew. Drew fighting his way close to the 25-yard line. 
And if he got there, it's going to be a gain of about four. And the officials say he stayed in bounds, so the clock continues to run. This, Under six minutes now. This is the time of the game where you're running against nine and ten guys. You, you have to control the football. You're trying to run the clock down. Carl Durrell's football team, you're not thinking pass. You're thinking of just that clock and whittling that down. Well, Drew now 25 carries, 126 yards, and Mike, 92 of those have come in the second half. He has really done a great job. Marquis has uh, been in on most of this series as the tailback. And on second down and six, they give it to Marquis. Nothing doing the right tackle. That's a nice job of penetration by Wyoming. And they'll stop the play for no gain. And now third down. And here comes Drew back into the lineup. I wouldn't be surprised to draw here or an outside zone play. What UCLA did on the last play is try to spread out Wyoming's defense with one back set. Clock is now under five minutes to play. Third down, the line to make is the 19-yard line. And look at this, 39 rushes, 20 passes, 59 total plays, UCLA. Five minutes, they've taken off the clock in this drive. They're going to throw the ball. And Corral steps up his hit, and he falls forward. He's going to lose a couple of yards in the play, but was wise enough not to throw it into harm's way and turn the football back over to Wyoming. We talked about David Crow, and he's really played well tonight, but he has shown the inexperience here late in the game, fumbling one and not getting the football off here, taking the sack and moving toward the line of scrimmage, allowing the defensive line to get to him. 45-yard field goal attempt coming. Ball is down. Yeah, I don't know if he's got the distance or not, does he? Wide left, no good. So Medlock unable to get that one through, and it gives the Cowboys another opportunity with 4.02 to play, and you can see the ball sliding off to the left. Wide left, no good. He made no beef about it. It's a four-point contest. ESPN's presentation of the 2004 Pioneer Pure Vision Las Vegas Bowl. Brought to you by Pioneer Electronics. Proud sponsor of the Pioneer Pure Vision Las Vegas Bowl. And in part by Las Vegas. The best seats for every game. No tickets required. Only Vegas. And Capital One. What's in your wallet? So we are back in... Uh some of the many lights in the city that uh, simply never sleeps and if you've ever been here obviously you're aware of that it doesn't matter what hour of the night you get up there's some people out moving around and a lot of them are moving around with cards in their hands or on the one arm bandits chance for Wyoming to come back and make last moment heroics UCLA showing blitz they send one man right up the middle and as he's hit the pass is thrown and it is almost intercepted and a good job of playing defensive back actually on the play was uh, for the Cowboys Trey Brown is the man who almost picked it off yeah, Trey Brown in good shape Bramlett under pressure UCLA's defensive line getting to him as he just threw the football I know Aaron Rob Aaron Andrews is on the sideline and the wind looks like just died down run well, I don't know about died those fly the uh, balloons down in the end zone uh, Doesn't are, look well that flag uh, right there is not moving very much but there's still a little bit of a breeze but not nearly the effect that it had in the first two quarters Agree with you. They rolled the pocket. Big pressure coming from inside. This one thrown. Did he catch it inbounds? Yes. They say no. No, they're saying now incomplete. Tyler Holden, the intended receiver. Joe Glenn's going to be right on this. No. Uh, Came down with a foot on the call. line. It is a good call. So Tyler Holden, the redshirt sophomore out of Littleton, Colorado, within a breath of making a huge play to pick up a first down. It's now third down and 10, and Wyoming needs to take it out to the 38-yard line. Obviously, under these conditions, down by four, 
They probably will be going for it on fourth down, I would imagine, if they don't pick it up here. Bramlett deep in the pocket. Pass is caught at the 47-yard line by Holden. Tyler Holden held on to a ball with two Bruins all around him. Ron, hey, excellent throw by Corey Bramlett. Tyler Holden splitting too deep coverage. It's right down the middle. And they can't make the play. Ben Emanuel yeah, he was trying all to get to him. Emmanuel was right there. There was not interference, but he was still he was there to hit him immediately. And Holden with an excellent job of concentration and holding on to the football. Holden now four catches for 115 yards. Quick throw, too tall, incomplete. We talked about this football game. This game has changed momentum all through the football game. But the missed field goal, Bragg dropping the punt. Wyoming has a chance here to pull the big upset of the bowl season. Corey Bramlett, right now you don't worry about the running game. He's got to get this football to Bo Knight or, or Holden and keep moving this football because he's got a chance to pull it off. 275 yards, 17 to 31. It's Bo Knight that they send in motion. And now they stop him, they stack him, and he's open right over the middle. They throw it to him. He catches it and then gets banged down hard. That's enough, I believe, for the first down as Eric McNeil came over and hit him with a chest-high tackle. Brought him across the middle on an option route. Open, almost thrown too late. A great hit by Eric McNeil. Yeah, it's, a, it's a wonder he held on to the football. McNeil choosing not to go to the head, but he hit him with a chest-high tackle, and they're going to bring the chains in to measure and see it is very close. I think he's got it. I like the confidence of Corey Bramlett right now in the Wyoming offense. They have a very good chance to pull this upset off. I like their chances. Right now, Holden and uh, Bo Knight over 100 yards and receptions in this ball game as the Cowboys able to move the football again they hit a drought in the middle of this contest and simply couldn't get very much done but right now they're driving and it's a first down at the 37 yard line of UCLA blitz right at the middle they got to him but the pass is thrown complete and he'll step out of bounds immediately that's pleasant and pleasant out of bounds at the 29 yard line yeah their pass protection is excellent the offensive line led by Trent France Corey Brama right now is confident quarterback his receivers are catching the football UCLA's back on their heels on defense just keep taking the throw but they got to pick up the first down here you see the numbers holding 115 a bull night 107 they go with the running play and hit at the line of scrimmage close to the first down is Harris and he is going to be close to the first down and let's see where they're going to mark this boy <laughs> They're going to have to believe the uh, the change in. You can see the yellow line. A lot of time going off the clock here. And to yeah, it's still running. Third down. Now 2-9, and they're not going to measure. It is uh, obvious he does not have it. This almost where you got to get up there and take a quarterback sneak here, pick up the first down. Under two minutes to play. 154, now 153. Wyoming using a lot of time here. Get the quarterback sneak, get the first down, get lined up. Third down at about a half a yard, and he's going to burn a timeout after using that much time yeah. off the clock. Wow. So let's take a timeout. 141 left, four point UCLA lead. We'll be right back. Tonight on SportsCenter, did Shaq suit up against the team he calls the Queens? Michael Vick breaks another record. This one he can take to the bank. Plus, the heart and soul of the Red Sox return. Sports Center after the game on ESPN. So we are back. It is a four point ball game, and now only one timeout left for Wyoming. And as they break the huddle, Trenton France is the man who'll come out over the football. And we need to make mention again it's been talked about before what a 15 
academic All-American players who got an $18,000 scholarship from the National Football Foundation in New York a couple of weeks ago. Civil engineering major, a 396 GPA. Ronnie played, lost the football, got back on it, and Mike, where his knee touched. I don't like to call because when you have a running back, you got your backup running backs in there. Joseph Harris has been hurt a couple of times. Take the quarterback sneak, pick up the first down. Well, I don't know if he got it this time. Carl looking on for the near sideline. I'm telling you, because he did not, he didn't get full forward progress because he was too busy recovering his own fumble. And uh, now that they're going to stretch it out. And obviously, uh, Joe Glenn's got no choice but to, to go for it if he does not pick up the yeah. first down, and he's not going to have it. Look at that. That's about, what, three chain links. The other thing, Ron, is a lot of time wasted yeah. in between plays and then having to burn a timeout, leaving you one left. Bramlett's a big guy, 6'4", 218. I would have rather seen the quarterback sneak try to pick up the half yard well, in fact you said 45 seconds ago on the clock just come back to the line of scrimmage run the quarterback sneak with a guy that size so here they come to the line of scrimmage it is fourth down and UCLA brings everybody that they can close to the line of scrimmage quarterback sneak and he does not have it he is going to be stopped I believe close now the lines just come in and I may be premature. I think he got it. Uh, I, I'll tell you, when you look at the replay, there was not really a surge from the offensive line. They got a very generous spot yeah. because it didn't look like he had positive yardage on the play. But the, where it's been marked, I have to correct myself and say, yep, he's going to have the first down, but just by inches. I want to go back third down was the time to run the quarterback sneak yeah, yeah. and uh, still down to 114 real close to where they picked it up I'm going to say he's got it oh I think he does yeah from where the from where the spot has inch. come yeah he's going to have it there it is that's big the spot now they got to get up the line of scrimmage here don't waste time calling a play get going So the play, the clock from the ready. It is running. 111, now 110. From a shotgun formation. Steps up, Bramlett going for the end zone. Bo Knight, the intended receiver. Flag comes down. And boy, this is going to be a tough call of its defensive pass interference because it looked as though Bo Knight I is the man who shoved. I think they're going to call it on UCLA's corner. Pass interference, number six, defense. Matt 15 Clark. yards from the previous spot, automatic first down. Carl Durrell out on the field, talking with the official. You take a look right here. Good call. He, he couldn't get to the football. He's trying to get to football. Mac Clark cut him off. So with the penalty, it moves it down to the 12-yard line, 61 seconds left. Clark doesn't believe so, but from looking at the replay, when he did run into him first, not allowing him to come back to the football, that's when the flag was thrown. Sports Center coming up immediately following our ball game, and that's in 61 seconds. Bramlett retreats, throws over the middle, touchdown, Rakowski, the tight end. scored 21 unanswered points and then as Mike said what could turn out to be the play of the game a line drive punt Bragg came up to field it it bounced off his face mask as the extra point is good recovered by Wyoming they went on to score
rather than giving up great field position to UCLA. And it looks as though that's going to be the difference in this ball game. Let's take a timeout. 57 ticks showing on the clock. Wyoming leads by three. We'll be right back. Bramlett, what a night throwing the touchdown pass to his tight end. Ron, he led him on a 72-yard drive, 10-play drive. Four of his last five passes he hit truly with a great effort, Corey Bramlett. So UCLA, if they're going to pull off a miracle, it has to be one that they can pull off in 57 seconds. Down by a field goal. Carl Doral, not a fellow who shows a lot of emotion on the sideline. We saw Medlock looking on there. He's the place kicker for the Bruins. And they're going to kick this one on the ground. It bounces a couple of times and now being picked up by Marquis. And he is going to be hit and tackled before he gains a single yard. Well, what coverage with the Cowboys. Well, tonight's player of the game brought to you by Capital One. And there he is, Corey Bramlett. 20 of 34, 307 yards, two touchdowns, one intercept. And Maurice Drew running back for UCLA, 25 rushes, 126 yards. And David Corral can still have something to say about this deal right here. He's got to pull this offensive team back. He's got three timeouts, 53 seconds. Short drop out in the flat, gets it complete, and steps out of bounds at the 29. That's Bragg. He's got to get him in the field goal range. Sports Center coming up next, and that is in about 47 seconds, 47 game seconds. You see, Medlock is a career field goal. It's his longest is 52, and what breeze there is left is behind him. Of course, he missed a very important one earlier here in this quarter on second down corral looking looking steps up gonna run it he's got a lot of room he'll pick up the first down and then go out of bounds at the 37 yard line and there's still 39 ticks left as robbins pushed him out wyoming's played five overtime games in school history four of them right here <laughs> and ron Corral's not, uh, he doesn't look comfortable throwing the deep pass. They got to still take what the defense has given them in short pass. They got some time here in timeouts. Keep an eye on number one, Brandon Brazil. He's the flyer. Pressure coming. He's got to be sacked at the 27 yard line. And he gets shoved down again. The excitement by Robbins, and Robbins has got to be careful as the quarterback was trying to get up and he shoved him back down. We well, had some open receivers. He had Junior Taylor open, but not enough time to find him. Fifth sack by Wyoming tonight. And UCLA uses one of those three timeouts. Talked about Carl Durrell earlier. He talked about Homer Smith, the emphasis uh, that uh, he talked about the guys that meant a lot to him. Terry Donahue, Mike Shanahan, Rick Neuheisel, and now he needs all he can get here to help him get back in this football game. On the other side, Joe Glenn is becoming the biggest cheerleader on the sideline for his crowd and his defensive football team. How about Joe Glenn's ball club? Picked to finish last in their league. No one had any idea they would win six football games and become bowl eligible. Hadn't been the one in over 10 years at Wyoming anyway. And now tonight they are on the verge of pulling what could wind up being one of the biggest upsets in the bowl season there. Heavy, heavy, over two touchdown underdogs in this ball game. And right now they lead it by three with 33 ticks on the clock. Second down and 19. Blitz coming right up the middle. Going to go on top. Near sideline looking for Brazil. And it's incomplete. And that'll stop it with 28 seconds left. You talk about the win if Wyoming can hold on. If UCLA wins this football game, whole hum. It's a whole hum game for them. They beat a Mountain West team. I've always believed that throw these BCS, non-BCS, 
terms out because Mountain West, Mid-American, Conference USA, they all did whack. They all deserve to be BCS teams. Here comes third down. Corral under pressure. Gets the pass away. Got complete. And the hit is made. Did he stay in bounds? Yes, he did. Clock will continue to run. They got to stop it. They got two timeouts left. They call it with 18 seconds left. Sports Center coming up immediately following our ball game. Brandon Bell is the man who came up and made tackle. It's going to be fourth down UCLA. Ron, you talk about the Mountain West. Craig Thompson, commissioner, they've done a great job. Utah is going to get to play in BCS Bowl. Oh, this conference is going to get better and better because now you can recruit a guy and say, hey, I'm going to be in a BCS Bowl. You have the chance. And Wyoming, the door was left open by UCLA, and Wyoming kicked it down. Up next on Sports Center, here are the things that they'll be talking about. Big signing for the Red Sox. Uh, Pacers get their man back, and record-setting day for Vic. And that second story right there, I could not disagree with more, and I hope the appeal keeps him right where he should be, and that is uh, off the court. Yeah, I agree. Ron, you talk about Wyoming now. I tell you, this, this, these fans have truly loved this football team all year, and they love their coaching staff. And this is a team that, I'll tell you not, this is a, a big, they've had a lot of big wins in their football history. This will be one of them. Fourth down and 16 yards to pick up the first down. They got to take it out to the 47-yard line if they're going to keep this drive going. Keep in mind, UCLA does have one timeout remaining. There's a tight end, Mercedes Lewis. Try to get him down the middle. Corral retreats to throw. Good job of the offensive line. Going to go long. Up the far sideline, it is... Incomplete at the 30-yard line. Bragg, the intended receiver, and defending was uh, Bell. And boy, the far sideline just erupts. Ten seconds to run off the clock. And these huge underdogs from Wyoming are going to win a huge upset bowl game here in Las Vegas. Man, yeah. Joe Glenn... Everywhere he's been now, fans and players, he's like the Pied Piper. Yeah, I mean, they, they fall, fall in love him. with this guy. And I'll tell you what, now they, they, they play hard for him. His fans <laughs> show got a little damp there. Uh, he just really doesn't care. This is going to be a huge win for him. Yeah, we talked about the excitement all week of Wyoming. It was like I said earlier, like a little kid open up presents on Christmas Day. They've got a major present here for the state of Wyoming. Sometimes games are, are not won, they're lost. And I think this game was lost tonight by UCLA. They'll take the snap, they'll go down on one knee and that's it. The celebration begins, five seconds, down to four. Some of the fans trying to come out of the stands, two seconds, down to one, and the Cowboys have upset, heavily favored UCLA by a score of 24 to 21. Joe Glenn, the celebration begins, is Carl Durrell looking for, uh, for Joe. They have a quick handshake and head to their respective locker rooms. The final score, Wyoming, 24, UCLA, 21. Coming up next on ESPN, it's Sports Center. For more, log on to ESPN.com, your home for college football on the Internet. Now for Mike Godfrey, to Aaron Andrews, and our entire ESPN crew, I'm Ron Franklin. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. Good night, everybody, from Las Vegas, Nevada.